a secrecy about it. What the hell's going on in this town? Shut up! Just shut the fuck up! Stephen King brought them to life. Vampires. Now. Put it on here! They rise from their graves again. The town. Too good to be true. I will fear no evil. Look at me. As only Stephen King could create them. This town is dead until after dark. Welcome to Salem's Lot. Stop, holy man! You can do nothing against the master. The debris one of the vampires are creating vampires. The master wants you. Geometric progression, two times two, times four, times eight. There's a dead man upstairs. Welcome to Salem's Lot. Welcome to Salem's Lot. Welcome to Salem's Lot. You're not leaving Salem's Lot, are you? Just shut the fuck up! Yes, yes, y'all, it's going down right now. Episode 237 of the Triple Shots of Moods and Heart podcast is coming at you live and direct with the homies, JP, also known as the Mexicans, and Dave. Get off my lawn and tell your bitch to come here, Parka. And of course, I be a host with the most representing the West Coast Moods. Yeah. What's going on, dudes? Now that- Oh, so enthused. Jesus. <laughs> bring in that um, today, man. Just bring in that goddamn heat. Yeah. Um, so excited. I just can't hide it. Right. I'm about to lose control, and I think I like it. Honestly, man, I am excited because, you know, it took us 237 episodes to actually theme out a Stephen King episode. That's I've never really, heard of him, actually, before it's, this. It's I've never heard of Stephen King. It's it's bizarre in the in the nature that like <laughs> you know I know JP is a huge Stephen King adaptation fan. I've yep. been a big Stephen King fan my entire life. Read lots of books, seen all the adaptations, and I like just the now books too. <laughs> well, you like audio books. You don't like to read, <laughs> dude. And I and I hate when it's you say the I, same I'm, thing. I'm in the middle of reading this book, and I'm like, no, you aren't, bro. You're in the middle of listening bro. to the book. There's a it's, difference. You're, it's the same. It's the, oh, it's God. actually better. Than uh, to I actually just had this conversation with someone the other day, and they totally agree with me. They're like. Yeah, that's like kind of a pet peeve thing, man. It's like, yeah, I was reading this book. You know, I was in my car. I'm like, no, you weren't. You were listening to the motherfucking Listen, thing. Listen, I, like, I, I, do I don't think it's the same. No, I do not. both. I read too. I've actually honestly never, ever listened to an audio book before. They're like, good, man. Yeah. I've Some just, of them are real good. Yeah. Because Some of them suck. You, a lot of times they get like an, like, um, Michael C. Hall read Pet Cemetery, dude. He fucking killed it, man. Yeah, see, and and that's exactly what I said to the person I was talking to. I was like, man, I think the audiobook thing would totally depend on the narrator's voice and how it's interpreted and stuff. Like, if it's interesting, it would keep you kind of going. But if you well, got like this monotone fucking, you know, social studies teacher type fucking approach, you're like, nah, fuck this, man. But the <laughs> problem good. with audiobooks is though, you don't use your own imagination to create the characters. If you read a Maybe. book. And no, not necessarily because their voice reflects so much. If I'm reading a character and I get to a character and this character's name is like Joe something, and I immediately come on, I'm like, my name's Joe Mikababa. Yeah. And you're like, oh, that guy's old. But if you read it in your own and they explain Joe as something else, and you immediately think of your friend Joe and you mix him with that character, it's just not the same. It, 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 I don't think it's bad. I just it's say no. it's not the same. There's it's, no way it's the same. I it's really barely any of a trade off for me. I, I agree with that, man, because I like, think, I think it's fine. You know, when you read a book, it's like different. you're to you, your imagination is the best thing in the world, right? Yeah. So but I remember they when they I was you a reading voice already, it, it, you already had this character as someone else. I think that's truly why most people that read books and then watch the adaptation after are always disappointed in the adaptation, because yep. how you perceive how you pictured the narrative in your mind was probably the best it's going to be like, you know, you know what I mean? It's always different. And when you see that perfect example is one of the newer adaptations of 1922. When I read, uh, when I read the short man, the way I pictured it was like, so fucking, it was so different in my mind. Like even the characters were different, you know, landscape was different, everything. And then you watch it and like, I liked the adaptation, but it wasn't what I had 
pictured in my mind. I just thought my version in my mind was so much better. And it works the other way too, because when you watch a movie first, like now I write when I read The Shining, I imagined Jack Nicholson as Jack Torrance, but I also had my own picture of what they thought Jack Torrance looked like. Yeah. And he was he was just like a bulky guy with slick back red hair is what I imagined in the book. But I still mm-hmm. could never get the picture of Jack Nicholson out of my head. So it was always like it always like yeah. eclipsed it, it. You know, yeah, what I mean? the reverse is hard. It's hard. I think if you watch an adaptation and you read a book after like you can't help but fucking just picture what you've seen on the screen, right? It's pretty tough. Right. That happened with me with Pet Cemetery, like Yeah. I pictured Herman Munster the entire time. You got time, to. You know He's I mean? the best part like, of that movie. <laughs> yeah. See I, I see, I read Pet Cemetery before I saw the adaptation, so that was kind of different for me. Um, I can't actually think of too many Stephen King adaptations that I watched before I read. Oh, Carrie? you know what? Actually, Dr. Sleep will be one of them. I've seen the movie, but I haven't read the... I have the adaptation sitting right in front of me. I had, didn't read it before I saw the movie. So that's going to be a weird one. <laughs> but, I saw every single movie first, guaranteed. Yeah. Um, yeah, I saw I, I, I've like read seven or six or seven. I went read 1922 first. You know what book? Oh, I read The Mist before it was even made. So there, that counts. I yeah, yeah. The book, yeah. The, Same the, with the, the, the short story. The short story. Yeah. yeah. And the Skeleton Crew. I read all of Skeleton Crew. You know so what? Any is, of the movies that came out later, probably post 2000, I had actually read the books before. Right, right. That's like me too. Like all the shorts, like I'm a big fan of the anthology books, so I love the short yeah. stories. So all that shit, Night like Graveyard Shift, Shift and Night, uh, but Night Shift, like Night I Shift have, Collection and Skeleton Crew are excellent. I actually books. have an original, like my Night Shift is actually like the original. It's like a first pressing. It's so battered up, but it looks cool. It's got like, you know, the hand on it and stuff. But you know what book is really a, a, a way better um than the movie like i don't mind the movie but the book was so interesting because the way i perceived the shop and the in the town and stuff was just so much cooler was needful things Needful things yeah dude the book was a big it's a fucking it was a good book man i i don't know i got really enthralled and i read it in like a couple days it's a big one too but i couldn't put it down because it was just it was lots of things that were happening and i really enjoyed it the you know Medicaid what? Stand book is better, like, actually, than the movie. Like, the Stand book is better than the movie. I don't particularly think either of them are that amazing. Uh, I think the third act is poopy poop, but the yeah. rest is great. <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, everybody, when you talk to people like Stephen King enthusiasts, usually the Stand and It are, like, way up there in, like, the top echelon of his work. Mm-hmm. But for me, I didn't really think the Stand was overly that impressive. Um, it could just be because I've seen a lot of stuff like that since, you know, maybe at the you know, time it was more impressive. God bless um, my boy. I, I agree though. God bless my boy. And, you know, I love Romero with a passion, but the dark half book reads better as a narrative than you see it on the screen. In my opinion, yeah. it totally does. Have you guys ever read the dark half? No, no. I imagine so, uh, that is better. Because it is man. personality it's so much it's <sighs> because you really get into the psyche and you you kind of picture things differently and i think there's just a lot going on in the psychosis of the narrative that's you can't really showcase on film like it's just a lot harder narrative to 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 do in the depth that it's written in the book i don't know i i thought the dark half was just it's a great example of a book that's so much better than the than the i think in my christine opinion. is a better movie than a book way better you Carpenter. know what's funny Carpenter took that down and made it just less stupid because you couldn't I, <laughs> make that into what it is. It's dumb. There's a ghost eating a piece of pizza. Carpenter made it more like nihilistic and stuff. And just like the car's evil off the lot. Why? Who gives off? It, it's kind of mean so spirited too. It was just, it was just made like, with evil, man. Carpenter yeah, is just a way better, way, way better than the move. The I always just thought it was mean spirited when they like destroy his like freshly restored car and shit. And I'm just yeah. like, bro, that's fucking mean spirited. But yeah, be you know civil. They, they put they shit on the dashboard, Bob. I, uh, <laughs> I actually don't remember the book, Christina. I, I won't front, man. I, I read it so long ago <laughs> that I actually the can't best. remember the differences because I've seen Christine. The- so a many times. times that's that my I, favorite one of my favorite stephen king yeah I think so i just i don't well, know let me ask you guys this then um <coughs> sorry what's what's your favorite stephen king book oh man that's a good question like novel ugh, some of my favorite stories from here are shorter ones um, i like the short ones i go with night i, night I shift. love the short ones as well i go with night shift as a whole the book yeah that's one of my favorites uh like anthology skeleton crew i think it's got the four stories pretty cool um, one of my well, it's, favorite- got the, it's got the mist in there. The mist is one of his best stories. Yeah, one of my favorites is the Bachman books. The four stories that are in there. Oh, the which- Running Man. The Running Man's the best. So the Running Man. Yeah, I'll go with the Running Man as, a, the- as a book. 
And the newer issues of the Bachman books don't have the rage in it because it's right. it's the high school shooting story, right? So he mm. he purposely pulled that himself. He didn't want that story out there. It's a really brutal story, and it's written at a time before it wasn't popularized. It wasn't there wasn't so much. I know. I, I just read it. Stream. It's like, pretty brutal. Just actually. recently, <laughs> but I actually have an original first pressing of the book too, and it's like it, it's such a crazy read because I remember reading it back in the day, going, "Holy fuck." Like, yeah, I had to get it from the damn library because yeah, yeah. you can't really find copies of it really anymore. But I like the story, the long walk in it. I didn't read. I didn't. I had to take the book back. I, it, it's it, like, I can't get through a fucking giant four stories in the time in three weeks. Those are all like those are actually back. not even store. They're like two hundred pages a piece. Yeah, I know. They're, they're small. No, they're small. No, they're called like novellas, novellas. that yeah. they put into uh, one no, story. A novella has to be X amount to something like a hundred. Yeah. Uh, under 100 pages is a short story, and then 100 to 150 is a novella. I can't think of the actual something. Yeah, I think in different seasons, that's where the body is, right? Stand by me. Yeah. It's called yeah, The Body. Yeah. It's a story. Yeah, yeah. Th- those stories are really good, too. Um, but yeah, no, Night Shift is uh, in Skeleton. Those are those are cool, man. I, I'm a big fan of the short. And I, I, what I think it is, though, too, when it comes to Stephen King, is that like when he writes in a shorter format, he's not as descriptive because he's got stories where like he describes a door opening for three pages. I'm like, bro. Like we don't need to get um, that in depth of a door opening. That's honestly insane. Gerald's It's a little long winded sometimes. I just read Gerald's game and that was the case with that. I, I, I honestly, Gerald's game might be one of my least favorite Stephen King stories I've ever read. Okay. So remember when we talked about this on the show before, do you remember my Gerald's game story? Uh, okay. I so can't remember it. <laughs> okay. So anyways, I bought the book when it came out, I believe it was in like 1993, something like that, because I remember I was on my bank, my grade seven, the seven, was it seventh grade? Yeah, it's a seventh grade graduation. So we went to Vancouver for a week with our class, blah, blah, blah. So that book had just come out and I and I picked it up and I read, which I thought was the whole damn book. <laughs> and remember when the movie got made. And so I watched the movie and I was like, I don't remember this ending at all. So I went and grabbed my book. Well, my bookmark was about 80% through the book. I never finished it. You had the same bookmark in there all those years. I do. It's sitting right in front of me. And it's literally in the same spot. So I never, ever finished the book. And I was like, that's fucking hilarious, man. But I actually can't remember the adaptation or the book to the adaptation. Like what's, it was so long ago. It was 93. I think it was I'll one. tell you, the worst book I ever read by him was Nightmares and Dreamscapes. I got like halfway through it I never did and I kept that hitting one. like two or three shitty stories. And I was like, I'm done with this fucking book. <laughs> yeah. That, that one is and one of I the never most- read Stephen King again. That's one of the mo- that's one of the more hit and miss <laughs> anthology books. But I love uh, what is it that just not just before dawn the um oh that one that just that he just did. Um, it's got, it's got a bunch of stories now too. That one's got some good stories in it. I like Full Dark No Stars, which was the one with nineteen twenty two in it. Yeah, yeah, that, one's that good. was a great uh, short story compilation. Um, I, think, I think my better novels that he's put out like you know in probably modern probably in the last 20 years or whatever which hasn't been adapted which i'm really shocked because it's a really good book it's very descriptive and it's the way i pictured it was pretty cool which is doom a key i, I i'm really shocked that no yeah, one's I haven't adapted this one, man <clears throat> like it's really good well, do, Consider- you? do you pee <laughs> <laughs> I'll, yeah. I'll see myself out <laughs> <laughs> um that one was from 2008 are we sure that that hasn't been adapted? No. I, going back to like one of my favorite, like, uh, I don't it's know. Been, it's, it's so many of my stories. Attempted. So many of the short stories I love. But one of my favorite novels that's not like completely, you know, a thousand page, whatever, is probably Misery. I like the read of Misery. Misery book, is really good. It's so much more violent than the adaptation. The adaptation is great. But if you read the book, it's just like, <laughs> it almost makes you laugh. It's so brutal. And I feel like it. I feel like the same way dave does about carpenter's thing though to me in like the book when she cuts his thumb off and puts it on the birthday cake it comes yeah. off cheesy to me like see, i don't think that would have fly see, to the movie. I, see i read i read the book way back in the day so like i'm reading that going no fucking way that's a perfect birthday <laughs> candle like i'm laughing right but like you know i, I guess you could perceive it a lot differently my, nowadays my but favorite yeah. part of the book that's not in the movie is it's kind of in the movie but the when he escapes the room the one time and he goes and um, starts looking at her scrapbook, and you actually get like the entire backstory of Annie Wilkes. Yeah, that in in the movie you, it kind of flashes a bit, but yeah. in the book that part is so unsettling. Mm-hmm. Going through the history of her like murdering patients at hospitals yeah. and shit. Um, that, yeah, she's very villainized more in the book, man. Hundred yeah. um, percent for me. I think that my favorite is it. I, I just think it is like the crowned 
jewel of, of what Stephen King can do. It's uh, another, of- it's another book for me that I actually don't even have my book anymore. Um, one of my old roommates actually, when he moved out, he took it with him. So I don't actually never have finished it, but read almost half of it never finished I've, it. Like I've seen the original film, you know, lots of times I've seen the remakes and stuff. It, it's all convoluted for me now. I can't remember what's in the book <laughs> and what isn't in the book anymore. Like it's been so long. Like There's I actually a lot can't more remember. Book. I just can't remember. So I, I couldn't comment on it, man. It's just too man, much. The, the book gets kind of weird, bro. <laughs> yeah. I just, so uh, but um, another one that I <laughs> really loved that was uh, the, it, actually a couple here from modern era, uh, 11, 22, 63, the jfk assassination time travel it's book one i still don't have i, I still, still think that's one of his best written works in the last like you know two decades it's just phenomenal yeah uh him messing with time travel it's really like sort of a romance at its heart but yeah. it is such a damn good book and then um one his most recent book fairy tale which is very different from him it, i mean it maybe it's like the dark tower i've never read those but it's yeah, I bought literally it for like wife. a fairy tale. It's not really like a horror thing, but it's it gets dark too. And that book is really good. And then I really like The Outsider recently, uh, a couple years ago. They yeah. did an HBO uh, se- mini series or series on that one. Mm-hmm. I've watched it, but the book is like really fucked up. Like the yeah, the, the wife loved it. Yeah, she, she read it. She loved it, man. She just read like all that other trilogy, like the end of watch and, uh, you know, finders keep like all that type of shit. Yeah. His, she read his all those. new like favorite character is like this chick. I forget her name, but she's yeah. in the outsider and she's in a couple other stories. And his next book is actually titled her name. You know, what uh, is a way better book than an adaptation? And I've always kind of, I don't know. I've always had a love hate relationship with the movie, but the book thinner tells the story so much better than the adaptation is is that in the bachman books um i think was thinner done under bachman richard bachman i can't remember probably it, it could have been yeah it's either um, or and then which one uh, uh, th- thinner. thinner i think thinner was actually yeah, yeah it could be it, the book is so much better than the adaptation <laughs> the adaptation just come it falls a little bit flat for me i think it's also the production on it too um the, the, then uh another one that i ju- the last one i read of his just a couple months ago was called joyland did anybody ever check that one out mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah i have it sitting right in front of me it, it's I actually it like really enjoyable it it's not really again she like, likes his horrible. crime his pulp novels the yeah, wife yeah. is she's read all of them man like i bought them all for her and then she she really likes us she kind of likes to mix up you know do the pulp thing or do, you do the crime do the horror do the whatever yeah he kinda, the, he's the been bulk very of different. that story is just a kid working for the summer at an amusement park in the 70s and th- that's literally like i'd say the murder stuff cu- is like the last like 50 f- 40 pages or something but it, it's mainly just this kid working and it, it's just enjoyable <laughs> you know what you know what's really funny so I don't think I've actually ever seen them. I might have seen the movie, but I'm not sure. Hmm. Now when I think about it, but I actually, have, I actually have the hardcover and the soft cover, and I've never even read the book. I have two versions of it. I've never even read, and I don't think I've seen the adaptation, which is Dolores Claiborne. And I always hear from people that you know the movie's not that great. I don't really hear people talk about the book, so I have no idea. That what takes guys- place at the same time as Gerald's Game. Yeah, I have no on idea. On the same like lake as when she was like diddled by her dad. Yeah, oh, crazy. Okay, so yeah, I I I, I want to say I haven't seen it, but maybe I have. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure. I just keep picturing I don't know Andy Wilson that movie. Dolores K. Uh, Clayburn. I don't know anyone. I've seen it. it. Is you like it? I just keep. Yeah, it's a good movie. Andy I used Wilson. to show on TNT like all the time or TBS, one of those when I was a kid all the time. Hmm. Yeah, interesting. But so many times, what actor did the most Stephen King adaptations? She did three. Kathy Bates did three. Um, Dolores, Misery, and uh, The Stand. Ed Harris no. did two. Mm-hmm. He did, no, he did three. Needful things, creep show, and the stand. Yeah, in the stand. Yeah, that's three. It's got to be one of those two, right? Um, what's that? Other, what's uh? I don't know who actually like acted in them. Um, Stephen Weber. He did a bunch, didn't he? He did all the McGarris TV movies. I'm sure. Tim McGarris <laughs> probably has the most directed ones <laughs> for yeah, no sure. Planning no coming up on him. Yeah, yeah. I think he has Flanagan two, two now. Better. Right? two or three flanagan got more than two doesn't he you got gerald's <laughs> game and uh dr sleep right they're both good movies too well he's a huge stephen king fan like even that midnight mass show is 
from what I read, it's it just Salem's basically Lot. Salem's Lot. Well, Romero, I, I guess Romero has Romero two. had Dark Half and Creep Show. Creep Show and Dark Half, and he almost did about a hundred more. Pet Cemetery, Salem's Lot. Actually, Salem's Lot was one that he was actually asked to direct, yeah. and then when they told him it was going to be made for TV, he dropped out yeah. instantly, and he's like, mm, "I can't make that movie on for TV." Who? So Romero. Romero. He was going to do the stand as well. Yeah, Romero had the most failed versions. Oh, Toby Hooper directed probably a lot too. Toby Hooper did a bunch too, didn't he? Isn't it Mangler? Mangler is a Stephen yeah. King. Yeah, it's a yeah. short story. It's a short <laughs> yeah. story. That he does. Which do you talk about? Oh, uh, uh, also Thomas Jane was in two at least. This yeah, yeah, yeah. just recently three three yeah. Dreamcatcher, The Mist, and nineteen twenty two. Oh, oh yeah, Dreamcatcher. Yeah. That's weird. You wouldn't think him. You know, um, of all the horror icons, the only one that really hasn't directed a Stephen King is Wes Craven. I know, and that, I've always thought about that too. I'm like, this me too. Weird. I always think about that. You ah, got it's Carpenter an interesting with thought, actually. <laughs> you got Romero with Creep Show and The Dark Half. You got you Carpenter. Got Cronenberg. Like, Cronenberg has The Dead Zone. You fucking got. Uh, and we just mentioned um, Hooper. Toby Hooper with The Mangler, which is a good adaptation. That's a good adaptation too. Which one? Like, the Dead, Dead Zone. Zone. <laughs> Dead Zone's a good movie, <laughs> yeah. dude. The Mangler, literally, bro. You read that short story, and it's like. This one, like you would just never think to even make it a movie, right? No. <laughs> it's like it's a, there's a like a killer movie. fridge in the story and shit. It, it's literally just such a short, like weird. It's Only like, Toby oh, Hooper would be drugged out enough to have his leads be Robert England and Ted Levine. I think I remember Graveyard Shift, the, yeah. the short story being a lot different than the adaptation too. It is the movie's yeah, actually. I ends, like the movie. It a lot actually better. ends differently too. It's basically yeah. like a Fight Club type thing. Yeah. It's I one movie that I movie. I've, I've Way always much. had, I've always had this. I, I've loved Graveyard Shift. It's always been me one of those too. ones that has yeah. always Didn't stuck I give it a nine? I gave it a nine. I gave it a nine. Yeah, I was like, Dave what really doing? loves it. Oh, I just, I, that's, that's one of my favorite characters. movies. I'm not it's gonna lie. I watch it all the time. There's me so too. Much I watch it every year. Yeah, it's good, man. It's ah, awesome. Brogan is such a douchebag. I've got Brogan so good. No, Brogan's the best. His lines. Brogan is the best. He's also in Night of the Creeps. He's got the best line in Night of the Creeps. He's like, I've, when they, they're they carrying that old lady out, and he's like, if we used a different stretcher for every piece, we'd be here all night. That's what he says. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's actually like one of my all-time favorite poster arts, too. I have an original one sheet. Oh, yeah, that's a great I, one. I love it, man. And it's the just Supernaturals the, is the same cover art, except there's just a different outfit. Right. Instead of a, uh, uh, it's just a Confederate <laughs> soldier skeleton. And then I miss those. It's like, we're just going to put a skeleton on the box. That's the cover art. I like it. Yeah, that Put a hat the, on it. the new ver the the modern um, version of that is you know the girl on the cover on her stomach like reaching towards the cover yeah. the front like that's on like a million different getting movies. pulled away by some spirit yeah. or something yeah yeah dude, so yeah. many movies with that <laughs> so I many. wonder why Craven didn't do a uh, Stephen King it's kind of I wonder if he was me. ever like like a lot why I like reading like the old fangos and stuff is because a lot of time they'll announce stuff. It's like a time capsule, right? Like they'll announce stuff and then you just know because time has passed, it never happened. It's and like, yeah, it, there's weird stuff like that. Like, uh, you know, in some of those issues, like Romero uh, is taking on the stand or something like that. It you know bums I mean? me out too that Romero never got to do a Masters of War episode because he was going to yeah. do the John Not McNaughton one, but he was busy with scheduling or some shit and he never did it. Yeah. 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 You just know, I, yeah, it's unfortunate. I have a hard time believing that Craven was never approached to do a Stephen King or even or a Masters of Horror. Or a Masters of Horror. Yeah, you think that that there, maybe it was scheduling, maybe it was just you know. It, it's, he's a it, nice guy. I seem like everybody liked him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you never hear anybody say anything bad about Craven. No, or people, Romero. Or people, you never hear that. Say he was just so he was overly calm on the set. Like yeah. he just, you know, like a lot of directors will sit there and they'll direct, like they'll yell at you and like, do yeah. the, do this fucking thing this way or get the fuck off my set. But he was never like that. He was just like very calm. And like, sometimes you forget he was even there. It's a weird you director. Don't hear negative things about Stuart Gordon either. You, Stuart Gordon didn't have a king either, did he? He had a no. Poe and he had Lovecraft. No king. Uh, yeah, no, Poe and Lovecraft. He, he never did. But he is Gordon. I feel like never really made it to that level. Well, he Man. made it to a bigger level in a lot of ways, like stuff like Edmund and Stuck were bigger movies than a lot of the horror guys did. His Poe adaptation, yeah. actually. I love his adaptation, man. It's great. Oliver Reed. <laughs> oh, the pit. No, he did more than one. He did the Black Cat and the Pit and the Pendulum. Yeah, the Pit and the Pendulum with, with like, Oliver Reed is like completely shit faced in that. Like, But he's still good. <laughs> like he's really drunk. It's I, ridiculous. No, no. <laughs> he's so shit faced. It's fucking and, and that part is like the best part in the movie too. It's so funny. Well, yeah, Lance Hendrickson's really intense actor too. And yeah, he said Oliver Reed showed him his dick, the tattoo he had on his dick right when they first met. 
He just knew he was crazy. So he, he figured, I saw a kindred spirit in Lance Hendrickson. Uh, I can totally pitch that shit, dude. He's holding a fucking Stein of beer and he's whipping out his dick. It's like totally. And Lance Hendrickson's like, oh. And flexing cool. with the other hand, too. And the other army's flexing. Oh, my God. Like, you he was, want to arm he was a man's juice? man. Did you ever see that one time he was on that talk show and he just kept singing the Trugs? No. <laughs> wild thing and he's just fucking trying to, he he just lost to, like he wouldn't even answer the questions he's just saying ah wow like, oh. what are you doing <laughs> Oliver Reed man what a mess that guy was he was great he was great he's, he was a great actor he was nuts though mm-hmm. um, legitimately nuts yeah but also this is episode 237 which is kind of interesting we didn't plan that <laughs> If we oh, had known about wow. it beforehand, we would have did Doctor Sleep in the Doctor Shining. Sleep in the you Shining, know, but subconsciously, idiots. subconsciously, that is really bizarre that we didn't even, you know, we we actually planned Stephen King, but it was the wrong Stephen King movies for yeah. episode two thirty seven. That's just twenty two shots. In a subconsciously, we were onto something. We just we yeah, can't fully isn't figure that it out. weird though that we literally was like, let's do Stephen King. Like we kind of pulled it out of nowhere, you know? Yeah. It is. It is. I, I think it's because we just, you know, we were just looking for things to do and we came up with this. I mean, some of the ideas we came up with, we just rolled with, right? Yeah. We didn't really put too much thought into like where before it used to be like, we used to have like Skype sessions just to figure out shows and be like eight hours later and we're like, well, we figure out the next three shows. <laughs> yeah, because Jeremy used to not want to do anything, right? No. Well, we're like, yeah, whatever, was we'll that. do that. Fine. He, dude, like, he would always <laughs> complain that he never got to pick shit. And one day he's like, why do you get to pick the show? I, I never get to pick the show. Oh, GP got and then like, off. I was yeah. like, bro. And I'm, I literally broke down like the last like 20 episodes and like 70% of them were picked by him or something. It was yeah. like absurd. I had picked like one or two shows and I'm like, yeah. bro, what is going on? Come on. And I had picked the least. I think I, I don't think I even picked any really. Yeah. He always picked more. And it's because we would just give in. We're like, well, it's okay. Fine. I don't want to argue. Right. So it's like, fuck. Well, I mean, it doesn't. If somebody makes a suggestion on a, a theme show and then we all just pick one movie, that seems to be the kind of way to go. Or well, just that, agree yeah, on a it, couple. That is kind of these weird. zoology. Show, it's perfect because that's the format. You do three movies, got three hosts. Each pick what we, we agree on the theme. Pick a fucking movie. It's not that hard. Right. Right. <laughs> it's super simple to do. Like, that's the best way yeah. to do it because it's like over. It's over. So, um, but yeah, no, Stephen King, episode 237. How weird is that? That's very, that very weird. strange. It's very strange. Stay out of room <laughs> two, three. Seven. So I thought this would be kind of fun since uh, it's the the kickoff of probably obviously more Stephen King uh, themed out shows. But I was uh, I want to do it, Maxim overdrive and trucks. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought maybe it would be interesting to go to a website that we've done this. We did this. Last I week actually too. have uh, two things that I I mean, if you have something better, that's fine. No, I, I got nothing. I I, I've got today. this. So I was just I was looking at this last night. And I was like, I, there's got to be a list from somewhere. And I've done this. I've used this website before the film school rejects. And but it happened to be 50 Stephen King horror movies ranked. So it doesn't say Todd. Okay. This is, this that, that, I had King a movies. similar list yeah. mine was mine was also ranked i mean i was looking that, for like a top 10 list but then i was like you know what there's so many adaptations someone's got to have done a bigger kind of ranking or list or whatever and i'm like right. 50 that's perfect because there's literally probably like 100 adaptations it's crazy yeah. all right so and also real quick i i after that i have a uh every stephen king movie and tv show releasing in the future as well hmm. that's cool that's cool okay so 50 stephen king horror movies ranked from the film school rejects.com. Like now, I said, I wonder that. if they're going to use uh, like sequels, like return of the Salem. You Blood. know what? I didn't, I, the research I did was click onto the page and <laughs> the top number 50 isn't even on the very top. So I don't even know what number 50 is. I haven't even looked. So everything is going to be a huge surprise to me. So I have no yeah, idea how this is going to go. All right. So number 50 is the 2013 version of Carrie. So this okay, is the, so the crease or the children that is Moret's one definitely not the worst adaptation but then again it's the top 50 there's more than 50 adaptations so this one made the list yeah it's probably list. like fucking 100 yeah so uh carry 2013 number 50 interesting okay. oh okay so number 49 is uh secret window from 2004 with uh, johnny with johnny depp that's the movie's great yeah but there's gonna there's a lot of good stephen king adaptations yeah. i know but i i okay Man, I'll I actually forgot. It. For it. I actually saw this in the. I, th- I saw this in the theater actually when it came out. I, I liked it. It's cool. Um, number forty-eight is the Langoliers from uh, nineteen. 19- oh come on! 
<laughs> I like the Langoliers. I like the, the Langoliers worst CGI too, of all but time, Secret Window oh is way better. Oh my god, the CG is so bad in it. It, like, it might actually be the worst CG ever. I would agree. It's 1995. Like there was even at its infancy in 1995 with the CG man, there was still better CG in 95 than this. That like, is a title that needs remade. Yeah, it does, man. It just because the be concept updated. is great, dude. Just a bunch of people show and end up on a fall asleep on a plane and wake up and everybody's fucking gone and they're on a plane. Yeah, like, it's what? cool, man. A, a readaptation, just another adaptation, not remake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm just trying to get technical and be a dick. All right, number 47 is the 2002 version of carrie which um yeah that might be my least favorite one yeah it's funny because angela bettis is like one of my favorite female actresses i love her and i think we did agree when we did the carrie franchise do carrie do carrie um did that, we did we did we do the moretz film in that yep yeah man i think i, I <laughs> that was the first time i'd watched it because i'd never i kept putting it off because you know me i'm not like the biggest carrie fan um Stereo like I like Carrie, so I was always trying to put off the Carrie franchise because I was like, man, I got to watch the same movie like four times. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Carrie's a top ten favorite horror film of mine. But I think that we ended up coming Carrie. in that Carrie two thousand two with Angela Bettis actually might have been the least favorite one. I'm not going to say the yeah. Worst I think one. I like the Rage the best out of the uh, out of rage. the sequel. The... And which is funny because they <laughs> just fun. Didn't we talk about it's that unrated. how when it first came out, like none of us liked it, and then also yeah, I liked it. We were like, I liked oh. it right away. Yeah, we're like, uh, that's like it has that kid up. from fucking Home Improvement being a rapist. <laughs> yeah, right. He's just so playing weird. himself. <laughs> that's hey, funny. if you had to name one movie where you think everybody's just playing themselves, what would it be? Um, this is the, the end of like Seth Rogen. Wolf Anything Man. with Oliver Reed? <laughs> Hello, Cheney. <laughs> when the moon is full, I'll have to drink another Natty Light. <laughs> dude but like 2000, 2002 <laughs> carrie should have been a better movie with angela bettis like patricia clark clarkson she's David great Keith. as carrie but the movie just is yeah boring man it, it definitely it like a snooze fest i'm not watching it ever it, it's it two actually, hours bro yeah it there's really? some, it was not a good ad, adaptation of the story man all right so uh number 46 is Dreamcatcher from i actually fuck with Dreamcatcher, dude i know it gets a lot of hate never finished it dude the shit weasels man okay yeah, so i always I, saw it on tv and i always heard it was shit so i never watched i wasn't long i watched like five minutes and then just like okay i haven't seen it since it came out so i actually honestly don't remember it That's it's guess, not though. it's not the best it could have been way better but i just kind of like it too wow so it's got da damian lewis uh jason lee timothy Morgan Olfen, freeman thomas tom, jane tom jane donnie tom Wahlberg. sizemore tom sizemore's in there dude this yeah. is a crazy cast man yeah, good I, cast. I, it's a good cast. It's got Mr. Donnie Wahlberg. Fucking new kids on the I mean, block. Donnie Wahlberg did a great job in the sixth sense, right? Okay, I'll shut up. Um <laughs> Yeah, crazy. I, I might have to go revisit that one, man. Well, we could do it for Stephen King too. We no. Like, why? Number two. There's well, 72 movies of Stephen King movies. Why are we wasting space? Well, Life most of them are going to be in like other shows, though. We have actually done that. a lot of Stephen King reviews over the yeah, years. Yeah, we've done like a shit ton of actual Stephen King reviews. We did Dead Zone. I know that. We've done Harry, we've done Pet fucking, Cemeteries. We've done Carrie's. There's it with lots of fucking ones. We over did the Graveyard time. Shift. We did Graveyard, graveyard Shift. Though. We could do the Mangler. Is there only three oh, of them? God. Or four of them? Is there oh, the really? Mangler series? Three. I think there's three. I think it's just a trilogy. You could do the Mangler. Okay. I yeah. would do it. I'm oh, just curious on each. I don't I'm curious on part two and three. Soon. I have no idea what they're how bad they're going to be. All right. So <laughs> I was just talking about this one. Uh, number forty five is Thinner from 1996. Oh, Thinner's like, pretty good. I like Thinner. Thinner is good. Yeah, it's not a bad yeah. movie. It made I my just, top I ten just, in ninety six. I just think the uh, I think the book is, is it's just stuff. a better. I think it's just a, yeah. I know ninety six is ninety six was a rough one. Ninety six is fear, bro. Very top heavy. Very very top heavy. And, and by top heavy, no. normally when we say top heavy, like we mean like fifteen. Well, in ninety six, it's like three or four. Three. Yeah, I know. But no, you're saying top heavy. I'm like thinner. Thinner is not top heavy. I mean, for me, I know thinner not doesn't even make top twenty five. <laughs> if it was a 1985 movie, it wouldn't even make my top twenty five in 1985. I mean, really, like, yeah, 96. I mean, obviously, the Scream was that year, but you know, Dust Till Dawn. I know GP is the biggest fan, but the Frighteners. And Frighteners. Those three are huge. Wait, I'm you not a Scream the Craft from Dust Till Dawn. Oh, the no. Frighteners. Frighteners. You got Scream the Craft from Dust Till Dawn. Frighteners. Thesis. Hellraiser. Four. Thinner. 
Doctor, Stan Hall Syndrome, Tremors Dude, 2, Hellraiser Island Doctor, Moreau, Tromeo and Juliet, Leprechaun 4, Bad Moon, Ebola Syndrome, The Dentist. This this is a horrible year. Naked splatter blood. This is a bad fucking year. It is, man. Yeah, no. If it did, if it didn't have those top like three movies at the top, like this would be the worst year. If you remove those three, it would literally be the worst year. It still might be the worst year. Ebola syndrome. If you remove those top three, Ebola syndrome would be my number one. Yeah. (laughs) To be really honest, my number one is from dusk till dawn. My number two is Ebola syndrome. My number three is probably the Stenhall syndrome. I like Tromeo and Juliet. I like Bad Moon. I like The Dentist. I mean, this year, Naked Blood, I forgot that's top five. This is a bad year, man. I did. Uh, year. Frighteners was my number one. Dustle Dawn Frighteners was is on two. there. How I could you not scre- have the Frighteners in your top ten? It, and, I don't think Scream it, I don't was like it. three for me, and I think Ebola might have been... I, I might have fucked up on the list. Ebola Syndrome should have been higher. In the my my list would be a lot different now. Sten Hall would be much higher. And the then, crap's not on my list. I didn't no, rewatch the crap recently. It's not on my list. It's not. Sorry. It wasn't on mine either. I've never liked it. I watched it when it first came out in okay. '96, and I was never a huge fan of it. I, it's like a, and I hate to use which the movie phrase, the craft. The it's craft. like a. Oh, I love the craft. It's a total it's so chick good. movie, man. And it's like, yeah, but I wouldn't you want to hang out with those chicks? Ah, uh, no. Particularly, well, you get to not particularly. <laughs> really? <laughs> no. You wouldn't want to hang care. out with some hot witches in high school. Nah. Rachel True is the coolest one of the bunch. Yeah, no, it's she's also in half. Is a bulk. Yeah, she's, she's not cool. She's gonna cut your throat. Yeah, yeah she's, she's, like fucking she's fucking I scary. I mean, I like that, but I don't want to <laughs> die yet. Yeah. All right. So number forty-four is oh crazy. I actually haven't seen this yet because I heard it was atrocious. And I'm not really the biggest fan, but 2017 is The Dark Tower. Oh That's God, that movie sucks ass, dude. Yeah, I'm surprised. It's like wow. wow. Secret crazy. Window is way better than that. Yeah, like way, way better interesting oh shit number that 40. would right there that would be the bottom for me oh the this very is very last the number th- 50. this is i mean I, I this is a little bit of a hot take there's film school rejects but number 43 is uh it chapter two from 2009 oh get the fuck out of here bro that movie's pretty good 43 <laughs> holy fuck that seems Come way on. too the high on the, the, the film school that, rejects that, that means fucking, fucking tommy knockers is above it too <laughs> Tommy Knockers is up. The Tommy Knocker sucks. Oh yeah, actually, there's it. there's a lot. Okay, so number forty two is uh, in the Tall Grass from 2019. I love that one, dude. I forgot about that. Was that was a one. good dude, one. That's Patrick uh, Wilson in that movie uh, singing CCR as a fucking. I almost put that in my top like. Wasn't this I, written I think it by my top twenty? Oh yeah, so it is Stephen King and it's Joe Hill. Joe so his Hill, son, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, that one's I, I was going to say dude. I thought it was actually Joe, just his son, but okay. Um, underrated right? movie, underrated, underappreciated. Oh, oh my god. Number 41. Oh, you got to be fucking kidding me. Pet Cemetery 2019. It ain't that bad. It's just mediocre. It's oh, pretty shitty. I really did not like this. I, don't, I, I really don't wanted it's, to. It's meaning like it doesn't make sense to me why they I mean, if you're not burying the people yourself, what's the fucking point? It's all about. Grief. They missed the whole the fucking point. point bro. They That's seem to miss the it. point. <laughs> but I don't hate, it's not like poorly made, except the dad is a weirdo. I don't like that <sighs> actor. I feel like that's part of making it good, though, is making it make sense. You're right. It's kind of like yeah. the Last House on the Left remake. To me, it the, missed the whole point. It missed this, this one jumped a shark, man. It did. And honestly, man, I'm a big fan of John Lithgow, but I didn't think he was like, I mean, I, I, mean, I guess it's hard to replace. Those are big shoes to fill, man. It that, is, That'd man. be like playing Freddy Krueger or Captain Rhodes. And How Lithgow? do you do it? Do you just do it? I, I mean, I would just do an impersonation, I think. I, I don't know how I would handle it. See, Lithgow was a really good character actor too. Like that guy's he's a really good comedic actor. He's a good serious actor. Like I, I, I think the casting's okay. I think the 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 portrayal of the character was just not as good as it could have been. But I, I don't it, think that's not my biggest watched, problem. I don't think he ever watched Fred Wood's performance. He said they were friends, but he probably avoided rewatching it just so he didn't rip it off because it's so memorable. Yeah, yeah, see, I would definitely not want to I, like you you pretty much have to do something different. I, I just thought the whole movie was a damn. I would just I, wear I a bikini too. The cop. I'd wear a man. bikini during it. Damn. Yeah. You know, you just you can't set you can't upset you know the the people of this generation by having you know a fucking a kid die like it did in the original Pet Cemetery. You know, it's like it, it it's just so of the times to change that narrative, right? I think it works so much better the other way around. I think that's what makes it so much more sad. I well, and you, also, massive, you just don't really expect it. You don't expect it in the original. Now yeah. everything's spoiled for you in 10 seconds. Yeah. Literally it, everything is spoiled I, for you every I time. Feel, now you like can't even watch wrestling without 12 nerds telling you how it's going to unfold. 
I know. It's like, I just feel like just right from that, that twist that they did in this one, I guess the, the change that they made, it just, it really did for affect me, the way for you me, see it. The most part of it is it just doesn't feel like they understand the source. And mm -mm. That, yeah, the same that's issue bad. That's bad. I, I, we should make a top 10 movies that don't understand the source material. Pet <laughs> Cemetery remake and Last House on the Left remake. Both and Hellraiser. Yeah, yeah, I think another... Hellraiser too. That new Hellraiser. I feel like it is. Oh, that's definitely on the list. But I don't think any of them are horrible movies. I don't think any of them are poorly made. I wouldn't say and horrible. And I think the Hellraiser is the best. I think the Hellraiser is a good movie. I just don't think it's very Hellraiser. Is at least fun. Hellraiser. Last House on the Left remake a is a great example of another cop out, well, right? A ballless movie. What makes the original so effective is the ending. Like it's so the tragic. Nihilism, yeah. The nihilism and is so tragic. The blow your it's brains out. The fucking redemption of the villains. I still like horrible. It. See, that's I love the, the original. Like this yeah, like one like remake, the remake. They allow someone to live, it's which is burger. bullshit. It takes away. It takes away that traumatic effect. It's and a well-made turd. What I, is there a microwave like scene it. in this one too? The microwave I've seen in what one in the last house and lab there's that really ridiculous yeah, the, but you yeah, said the, two the, the like ending. as in there's more than, i don't know any other microwave scenes in movies, <laughs> yeah so like, like no that's what i was like, thinking like evil laugh thinking? evil laugh oh evil yeah laugh. yeah yeah you're right you're right i brought that up when somebody brought up evil laugh that's all i can remember there was a microwave kill you yeah, never evil seen laugh microwave has a microwave massacre death. bro <laughs> that's not a microwave that's like a giant oven <laughs> that, that thing is a commercialized there's an <laughs> oven <laughs> <laughs> there's like 45 dude, minutes of that dude, movie okay. of that guy uh, here, just nodding show, and bro. eating like a rubber household leg whore, household appliance whore killer refrigerator that's coming oh. out Microsoft no, Max, no, I it got announced it. from Terrorvision. I know is that killer refrigerator movie better than the refrigerator from 1991 because I'm not yeah, that refrigerator, the refrigerator from 1991, it's, from the 1991 it's the same bro. one it's the same one what are you talking no, about no it's not no there's two refri there's two killer refrigerator movie I thought this and was this the 91 the one, one. 1991 no this isn't this one's called attack at the killer refrigerator the other one's called the refrigerator are they're different sure? movies yes I this agree. one's a short this one is a short and it's paired up with another short on the disc the one we watch is unwatchable it's like an hour and a half there's yeah. like a 20 minute segment I of walking think... up the stairs i know they took they took I a short right. and made I it guarantee like it. a full-length movie it's ridiculous. i know i'm right because i know i look into these i make the master list attack of the killer refrigerator and the refrigerator are not the same movie oh this is God. not the one from 1991 this one's from like 1990. well when i saw the artwork i just thought it was the 91 version because i know oh. I, I swear that's what i saw before okay that 91 movie is unwatchable boots we, we all gave it like one or two stars yeah, on it was yeah, it was sucks. actually legit bad maybe less it, it was legit bad and i think if on the like if it if it did actually come out on blu-ray i think it would probably be maybe a two or three that would just be like oh the transfer made it like a three out of ten <laughs> no so. the refrigerator is so bad 1991 and then we're gonna settle this right now uh, and then we're gonna I do it i guess you're right the killer i know i'm right but oh it probably wait, is right people are paying 20 fucking dollars for a 15 minute movie yeah there's two on there though two 15 minute movies <laughs> Yeah, I think so. That's okay, ridiculous. so you got Attack of the Killer to me, uh, Killer Refrigerator, 15 minute long short comedy horror. I, it looks like it's not, it, there's no way this has got to be SOV. Yeah. Yeah. Why are they saying and, it's a sought after VHS tape then? It, 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 the tape is sought after. Um, 4.6 out of 10. And then the refrigerator is a 4.2 out of 10. And it's an hour and 26 movie. It's comedy, fantasy, horror, 1991. This movie's unwatchable. Yeah, it's, oh my God. Okay. They call this right. splatter comedy. Is there any blood in the refrigerator? I don't remember. Any I don't think so. Splatter. I don't think so. And somebody's like, this guy's glad he said a clever and original horror comedy. He's like, if you like evil dead street trash, basket case, one, two, three, dead alive, beat the feebles, rabbit grannies, bro. This is nothing like any of those movies. This movie's <laughs> a turd bomb. Fuck yourself. Okay. Um, number 40, uh, hearts in Atlantis, 2001. I've actually never seen this. Ain't nobody watched that movie. No, I've never so I'm, I'm looking at this. It's got <laughs> Anthony Hopkins in it. It's got Anton Yelchin. Rest it's in not peace. a horror movie at all. Okay, so it says something about psychic belt. Yeah, I, it's I don't not know. horror. It's <laughs> not horror. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so okay, well, fuck that one. None of us give a shit. I'm okay, just I, I heard it's okay. Number thirty nine is uh, the Cell from 2016. I have actually never seen this one either. John, I read the book. Cell. This one That's and Samuel the last Jackson. Book I read by Stephen King. So Samuel yeah. Jackson did a few Stephen King adaptations, 1408. Oh, 1408. Uh, that apparently one? The Cell, I have never seen this one. And so. what, is he another one? Could be. Hmm. He's in everything, so he's got to appear in one of them. I don't know much about The Cell at all. but okay. oh, It's like a Night of Living Dead story. Everybody answers their cell phones and their brains get erased and they turn to like zombies. Oh, okay. <laughs> Technology horror. All right. So number 38. Your favorite. Yeah. Oh, 
uh number 38 oh here we go is the uh the tommy knockers from 1993 bro you should see the skill that they use on it the effects are so bad dude. on this dude i haven't seen a tommy knocker since i was six and i don't think i could ever make it through that movie that's like it's, a, it's like it's the so screenshot bad screenshot that they have is just making me laugh so bad it's so fucking that, tommy knockers is so bad you turn it off and put in seed people yeah right can <laughs> <laughs> see people the, the full moon movie. <laughs> yeah You're like oh this is bad i need to cleanse myself i'm gonna watch seed people oh my god that's so funny okay number 37 is uh desperation 2006 didn't um that's the ron perlman mick garris did that one yeah mick garris yeah yeah Never which one it. was it i missed it desperation uh, desperation i thought it oh, was that terrible. movie sucks yeah i thought it was terrible i've seen it yeah mick garris Ugh. okay so number 36 is rose red i believe 2002, 2002. Yeah, i have not I seen this one it. you didn't watch that for 2002 oh no i did what it's the long tv movie right yeah right 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 yeah i actually didn't mind this i thought i wasn't no, gonna really care it's for it. decent I, like with most adaptations of our uh, miniseries like tv movie things if they're in parts, I really think they're more effective if you watch one part one night and then the next part the next night. I know it's inconvenient, but I yeah. feel like that like I feel like it truly matters in that art form. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely watched <laughs> You're that. Talking one. about TV, fucking miniseries in an art form, it sounds so funny to me. <laughs> Dude, it is an art form though, bro. Hmm. Cuz you have to call pace it, you have to pace it out right. Like if you watch the first part of Salem's Lot, like it's paced like a movie itself and then if you watch a no second problem part, with Salem's lot one sitting or t- like I watched it all the same day and I was like, no problem, but yeah. it's great. Yeah, it's it, a great movie, it, but I feel like it works better if you do it in two parts. Maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. I'll never know. <laughs> all right. So number 35 is sometimes they come back from 1991. I like made, it. That Which made we, my 91 list. Yeah, I we've all seen this movie. We've all seen this. I don't think times. I used to love it as much as a kid. I don't think it made my top 10. It was close, though. It no, close. It, I've always like liked this movie, but I. I've never been like in love with it. Um, yeah, You're, like in love with her. It, it has a depressing <laughs> vibe to it, like a lot yeah. to me, and that yeah. kind of uh, works for me. Well, this is a good one. Um, nineteen or nineteen thirty. Number thirty four is at pupil from nineteen ninety eight. I wouldn't really say it. Never yeah. seen it. Been a while. Generally, horror? did uh, Brian Singer directed that movie? Yeah, it's um, it's got Ian McKellen and Brad Refro. Refro, yeah, how do you see one? Refro. Sounds like Scooby Doo says his last name. <laughs> I would I would say it's more of a like a more of a thriller than a horror film, but yeah, yeah. It, it's got it's got some pretty disturbing elements to it because it deals with like Nazis and shit like that. So it's pretty. And it's cool. also disturbing to think Brian Singer probably raped everybody on the set. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's disturbing. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, number thirty three is uh, fourteen oh eight. I actually think that's incredibly underrated adaptation. 2007, really? man. Yeah, I, thought- I think it's actually really good. It's dude. It's kind of reminds me of the shining in terms of like, just like the type of movie it is. Oh, crazy. So that's John Cusack and Samuel Jackson in this one again, too. Weird. <laughs> I think John Cusack is, he's like always kind of hot and cold for me. Like, I feel like he phones it in 90% of the time. He's good in like uh, yeah, roles probably. where he doesn't have to do too much, like high fidelity. <laughs> <laughs> He's good when he doesn't have to work. Like, yeah. What the fuck's that? He's going to be better off dead in uh, One Crazy Summer. I love him in those movies. Anything else, I'm like, get this, get this guy out of here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then honestly, when Jeremy told us he was a prick, remember Jeremy told us he was a major asshole, so that made me even feel worse about it. <laughs> right. <clears throat> yeah, kind of so, looks okay. like it, but I think 1408's a really good ghost type movie. Yeah, it's been a minute. It's been a minute from it. Um, was that 30th? So number 32 is <laughs> Riding the Bullet from 2004. Sucks. That one sucks. This this can't be ranked, right? This, there's no way this is ranked. No idea. It's but that's the an- definitive ranking, they say. This <laughs> that's is another. Everything. Like, this is they the most every ass Stephen ranking King I've fan. ever seen in my They've life. They've asked bro. every Stephen King fan in the world. Although some, some of the said. better adaptations are, well, no, haven't come up yet. So I know, but, yeah. but dude, like fucking riding the bullet, dude, that isn't even top 50. They that's asked Mick Garrison, Mick Garrison and his entire family what the ranking of best Stephen King <laughs> <laughs> The fact that all these Mick Garris ones are even in the top 50 is hilarious Our to Mick me. Mick Garris. We're sleepwalkers. Master horror. Master of Horror, Mick Garris. We're Sleepwalkers. I, better be on the, I love it, Sleepwalkers. It's, it's, it's in my top gonna, 20. It's definitely got to be. Look what you did to my shirt, bitch. Fuck, I love that line. Dude, that Somebody dies with a cord on the cop, nuts. bro. Yeah. Somebody Stabs dies him in the eye with the, the fork. Uh, that movie is actually In the fun. ear with the corner of the cop. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, 31 
is uh, 1922 from uh, 2017. Underrated. Good movie. Good movie. The good. story's really good as well. Yeah, the story's amazing. So Thomas good. Jane's scary in that. He's good, man. He's really, really good in this. Um. Oh, shit. Next page. Gotta go to the next page. Number 30 is, oh, shit. Hilarious. The Shining from 19... 19- 80. No, I'm joking. 1997. Oh, I was about to say, get the fuck out of here. Strikes again. Yeah. No, from 1997, of course, that's uh, Stephen King's. Never um, seen it. Me his either. readaptation. Yeah. I'm uh, mad about fucking Stanley Kubrick still. It's uh, It's been years since I've seen it, but like, I remember thinking it was the biggest trash bag shit I've ever seen back in the day. And I know I rewatched it back like, you know, 10, 15 years ago, and I, I didn't think it was as bad. So I, just, I heard people say it's not bad. Like if you're going in comparing it to the Shining that we all know. Well, this one's a little it's a lot different because obviously Stephen King wanted to adapt more to his liking because this is still in the time frame when he didn't like Kubrick's film. He hadn't he hadn't yeah. given it props yet, so he wanted to make its own. So it's a lot different. The acting is definitely not on par with um, Kubrick's, that's for sure. But uh, yeah, so number 29, Children of the Corn, 84. That's okay. Uh, it's not that great. I love it, but I do think that it's a little dated and and I can see why it's, it's a little slow, but I it, it's a probably like top 10. Somebody made a post. <laughs> somebody made a post no. the other day about like your what what movie what movie monsters as a child scared you. And of course, everyone was listening to everything from Pet Cemetery and stuff like that. I was actually going to write the cornfields from Children of the Corn. <laughs> Dude, yeah. Because I hate cornfields. And the like damn trying. music, man. Yeah. The man who walks behind the rose. <laughs> yeah. He so, who walks behind the rose, bro. Get people would never right, think straight. of the cornfields as a monster, but it's a fucking monster. It's scary. There is a monster when I was in a the kid, dude, That's I, what I'm saying. When I, listen, when I was a kid, I thought they were saying he who walks behind the roads. Yeah, the roads. Yeah. And then he who walks behind the rose with a S-E. I never fucking put together that they were saying rose in like is in like rose of corn. Well, it's actually he who walks behind the rap row. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay. laughs> All right. Number 28 is uh, the stand 1994. Fair. Um, sure. Yeah. Two thirds of that movie is really good. It, it really yep. does suck that the ending sucks. It's like the worst part about the movie. Well, that's terrible. the book. I mean, you couldn't do it. You can't change the ending of the book. Stephen King would cry. Well, they like did with the, the mist, <laughs> right? <laughs> and, and he did not cry. And they knocked no, that out of the park with that. That changes. He was the like, ending. "Damn, I wish I thought of that." Yeah, it's actually pretty brilliant. I mean, is um, that not the greatest compliment you could get from a writer? Right. Damn, I yeah, wish the, I thought of that. But at the same time, like. It's like sometimes you didn't think of it and you still make it a book. Remember that Quentin Tarantino went on about saying it's just Nightmare on Elm Street with cake frosting and I was just like, it really is. It's, it really is. I've that's, always, that's really why, is. dude, I've always felt like Pennywise is literally like Freddy Krueger, bro. He feeds on the face. That's why Wes Craven yeah. did a fucking Stephen King adaptation. Right. Should have made him do it. He already did it. He already did this already, movie. He already did it one. <laughs> I know. I fucking did this movie. What are you doing? And the um, parents ignore him just like an it. Like none of the adults want to like face up to what is wrong with the town. Just like they never want to face up that they burned Freddy Krueger. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's crazy. No, literally, crazy. it's a ripoff. There's, no, a it, lot, there's a lot of parallels. Okay, it's a ripoff. So number 27 is Cat's Eye from uh, 1985. Love it. Love it as well. Just keep it on your toes. Hey, Cat is McMillan. That's another the Dino De Laurentiis too. presents. Yeah. yeah. I actually, uh, I, I like all those segments, man. I like Cat's Eye too. I, I think Cat's Eye is it's you know it's not like I don't think it's top shelf, but it's very entertaining though. Um, top fifteen of that year probably. Uh, it's, but it's no, Kenneth, g- it made my top ten. So fuck yeah. yeah. Yes. Oh, I made my. <laughs> Why top did that De Laurentiis did that movie? It's fucking hilarious. Or well, produced that movie. Kenneth McMillan's in that movie, and he's also in Salem's Lot. Yeah. And Dino De Laurentiis produced that, and he also produced Dune, which has Kenneth McMillan in it. So Dune, that's kind of weird. The- yeah. Hmm. Shit. Okay. Uh, Twenty six. Creep Show two. Nineteen eighty seven. It's fair. I like it. I never I know, know about the, the, like all those aren't adaptations, right? I think Stephen King wrote some of the stories in that. Yeah, yeah. I think he writes some of the, the stories, but I don't think they're all adapted from a. No, I think it's the screenplays. Um, like he book. wrote the stories. He, they're not based on actual yeah. short. Like he wrote stories, like the screenplay stories. Well, that's like fucking dude. I was like, you know what? I want to read. Because I love the movie so much. Well, no, the I, raft isn't the raft actually a, a story. Yeah. I was literally the in the middle a of a sentence. Yeah, it's a story. 
what I was, was what I was saying was uh, there was I'm a big fan of Storm of the Century, and I was like, dude, I would love to read the book. There is no fucking book to that. It took me like forever to realize that. Yeah. No book <laughs> to sleepwalkers. No, book. no, there's no book to land. Is there a Langlier's book? Yeah, yeah, there is. I have it on does, audio. Does, I have it on audio the, cassette. Is the description of the monsters poorly done CGI? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what's your favorite? What's your favorite? Because like in Creepshow Two is weird because like in Creepshow One there's what five stories. Creepshow Two there's three. It's both oh, the same running time. Around. Yeah, my there's favorite like, in Creepshow Two is Old Chief Woodenhead. <laughs> okay, so you know what? I like that, that one. My least favorite, but I like that one a lot now too. Yeah, it used but to be my least favorite too. I think the raft because- was my favorite until I rewatched it. The last time I rewatched it, I was like, the raft's kind of fucking dumb. <laughs> the like, hitchhiker is my least favorite. Is the hitchhiker's awesome. my least favorite. Yeah, yeah, m- mine too. Old Chief Woodenhead like had to have been made in 1987. You probably can't do that nowadays. Probably, it's the best not. written one. Yeah, the raft is kind of. It's just, it's, it's just, it's just very offensive to a lot of people. So like, I could see them not being able to do that well, again. But I think it is probably the best story, and it used to be my least favorite for sure. Me too, but it, I think it's gotten better. I always Plus think about it. Villain, it's also got a good cast. The long haired asshole with, yeah. that's obsessed with himself. Like he's a pretty good villain. Oh, oh he's also in Nightmare Alley, and he's in that one, a Criminal Mind show. That actor is he? Yeah, he was the bodyguard in Nightmare Alley. Um, he was uh, fucking what's that actor's name? We all like Richard the Young uh, Dynamite Holt McCall McCallany. Oh, Richard Richard what? Richard Fuck, dude. He's in Bone Tomahawk. The old guy. He's in. Oh fucking, yeah, yeah. Dreyfus. He's it. No, bitch. Richard Richard Dreyfus. <laughs> he's in Bone Tomahawk and Richard Jenkins. <laughs> Who actually? <laughs> Richard uh, Jenkins. <laughs> right, right. Richard Jenkins. Yeah. I like Jaws. All right, number twenty-five is wow. This is interesting. Uh, Firestarter from nineteen eighty-four. Never right, seen it. I'll tell you what. If it's anything like great. the new one, it's not. I ain't watched. Soundtrack's great. Soundtrack's amazing in Firestarter. I Tangerine think this movie's Dream. okay for myself. Yeah, Tangerine Dream is fucking amazing, man. The score is the best part of the movie, though. Well, I just watched the movie the other night. It wasn't a horror film, but they did the soundtrack. It was by Tangerine Dream, and the whole movie was just banging because the soundtrack was fucking awesome. I can't remember what the fuck it was now, but. Anyways, Tangerine Dream, awesome. Uh, and George Fire- C. Scott's great in it, too. He's good in almost everything, man. George C. Scott's Yeah, he amazing. never does a bad job. No, he's a great actor. Was George a great actor. Firestarter, I bet. Number 20. Eh, no. no, it's not. Number 24. Firestarter's a real movie. It from 1990. Get the fuck out of here, dude. Number 24. This, is, this list sucks. <laughs> what, you want to hire? Dude, it's <laughs> literally like top like five. I think that second half's pretty rough. I'm gonna say it's, it's number twenty. I'm gonna say it's number twenty four. That's an exaggeration. I'm tired of hearing. I'm saying it's this not. It's crazy. fucking rough, bro. It's, not, it's literally. It, you're still. It's. It literally is just as nearly as good. No way. The only problem is the ending. Well, that's. I think the whole. I think the adult part is like the weakest. But it's not even the adult part. There's. I still, would give the first half a five out of five. And the second part of three out of five. Even though I am a massive John Ritter fan, I still would rather watch the first half. And then if, if I was to watch the adaptation, like, you know, how JP does, you know, you watch one half one night and then I just skip the second night. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that miniseries, though. It's got a soft spot. Like, yeah, no, it's, it's fun. When, uh, <clears throat> he's sitting there, Ben, as a kid, and he's like, Ben, hey, Ben, it's it's me. And he like, oh it's his dad. And he like, wait, that part's so fucked up to me. Oh my god, this is so fucking funny. Okay, this has been brought up a couple times, but this is really funny. The, just the placing of it. So number twenty four is it. Number twenty three is the Mangler from ninety five. Oh, <laughs> Bro, get that's the fucked. fuck. You're, uh, this, that's bad. What are they? Shame. You're right. That's bad. What are they doing? <laughs> Actually, like, it's like I couldn't believe it was next up. I was like, I was the actually mangler. thinking, I'm like, is the Mangler even on this list? And sure as shit, it's higher than it. The Mangler. The, 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 the Mangler might be like my least favorite thing I've seen Stephen King. No, I mean that's you know. I mean, it's what else is worse? It's definitely known as Tommy Knockers. <laughs> I've never seen it. Toby Hooper, uh, d- he didn't do a better job in this one than he did with Salem's Like, tell you that. But <laughs> no, he, he not. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Caleb's so Law, he fucking was on point. So the Mangler, number twenty three, number twenty two. Oh, here we go. Sleepwalkers, nineteen ninety two. I love Sleepwalkers. So do I. Yeah, it's actually pretty good, man. Ron Perlman. Dude, the, like the movie's tone changes so dramatically during that like scene after he like well, basically when he's trying to rape her, 
like dude the tone of that movie just like is, yeah it's, it's so fucking nuts dude and like sleepwalkers is kind of cool because it's like like weird vampire but cat like yeah fucking it's like a hybrid yeah how it's, come it's every cool time movie. there's like cat people they make them highly sexual like the movie cat people yeah. both of them I and, and also i love the soundtrack in sleepwalkers they use the uh the enya song and then they use sleepwalk by johnny and santo is it johnny and santo yeah, I love those both those songs. I love and they I really help with that music. movie. What can we pair dancing? with Sleepwalkers? Uh, cat people. <laughs> so you guys already did cat people. So we I'm thinking that. that yeah, this is probably one of the better, if not the best, McGarrison adaptation. Garris. Uh, Sleepwalkers. Yeah, McGarris. Is it an adaptation? No, Stephen King just wrote that. To be yeah, or he a did a script. Yeah. He, Based on a screen, yeah, whatever. So Mick Garris, okay, directed Stephen King. <laughs> we know what you meant. Doesn't related. matter. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Right. No biggie. Number twenty one, <laughs> uh, The Night Flyer, nineteen ninety seven. That's a great I one. I love The Night Flyer. Underrated movie. So it was Underrated. a TV movie, right? Yeah. HBO. 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 Yeah. It's yeah. not. It's not TV. It's HBO movies. Yeah. It's TV, bitch. They made movies. No, that's, for that's HBO. their fucking catchphrase, Dick. <laughs> I don't care. You're not old enough to remember their catchphrase. It ain't. H- it ain't. TV, I didn't. Do you think I had HB fucking O? Then don't talk about it if you don't know it. HB we had fu- it. It's not we just HBO, it. it's HB fucking O. I, I, I know you had B.O. You didn't have no HBO. <laughs> HBO. Bro, this guy, you, you guys must be hyper, fucking hyper rich, audio. bro. I heard of people having HBO. No, no, we stole or, cable. We had a chip. Yeah, we, we did too. For it. Yeah, man, of course. I loved for HBO it. back we're, in the day, man. Oh, dude, like watching like Dream On and Tales from the Crypt. And what was that? Yep. Oh, fuck. There was tons of good shows on there, man. I, the I hear it's not TV. I hear it's just HBO. I don't really know that. <laughs> it's home box. <laughs> it stinks, office, bro. It stinks now, man. Fucking. Does it mean home there, box office? There is no H. It's just yeah. Bondure. That's what HBO means. <laughs> uh, fucking didn't home even know what it means. Office. And I was talking shit. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. All right. So number twenty. Here we go. Graveyard Shift, nineteen ninety. Love it. I, I, I love it. Uh, as well. Warwick, man. Stephen Mock. Like, come on. Like shows uh, over. Honestly, man, people seem to <laughs> dude, forget about Brad Dourif in the film, but Brad Dourif is really Brad, cool. oh, that's like that, one of his best roles ever, bro. Dude, he has that <laughs> Vietnam speech and it's fucking golden. And uh I watched a disturbing behavior. You guys ever see that movie? Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. Um, who's the guy who plays that in there, like the crazy like janitor rips off his speech verbatim almost? Yeah, you were telling me that. Does he really? It's just oh like verbatim. God. Yeah, like you watch disturbing behavior, you're like, why are you just rip? And Brad Dorif off like six years previous. And oh, I like yeah. disturbing Brad behavior. Dorif off. I thought yeah. I thought I was gonna hate disturbing behavior. I watched it for the first time like this year, and I was like, or last year. I was oh, like, it's pretty fucking good, man. You know, I was watching fucking um, Blue Velvet the other night. David Lynch. Blue. Uh, just Velvet. out of the out of the blue. I just had. I just Brad Dorif's in that too, isn't he? I, yeah, and that's what I'm getting at. So I hadn't <laughs> seen Blue Velvet in years. Like I love the movie. I completely remember it. Like I'm. A I've big seen fan it one time, movie. and I have seen it in a theater. Cool good movie. Anyways, I, and I'd forgot about Brad Dourif and I'm like watching the scene and I'm like, oh shit, Brad Dourif's in this. He barely even, Who's he, he only has a, it? he's got, he's, he plays one of the kind of, uh, one of the side guys goons. too. Of yeah, course goons, he does. But, but he doesn't <laughs> yeah. really see, he only has a couple lines, but he's in a of lot of scenes, he does. He, you know, and it's just, it's Brad Dourif, but it's funny because it's like, you know, it's like pre child's play. I don't know. It's just funny to see him. in this That's like, how world. fucking but, he is though. He's just like, how many weirdos can I get in this fucking movie? David Lynch. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All right. David what's next? Number 19 is uh, The Dark Half, 1993. Never seen it. Speak I think it's a little the... high. Don't you? Oh, absolutely. I think it's Oh, I gave up on high. this list a long time ago. I, I wouldn't be, like I said, though, like, you know, I brought up the book being a lot better. And I feel like this adaptation is so hard to do based uh. on the source material because it's so... It's so psych. It, it, there's like a psychosis to it, man. It's very psychological. It's like, you know, the whole personality thing. And it, yeah. I think it's just hard to showcase visually, man. I'd like to rewatch the dark half. It's been years. I've seen it a bunch of times though, as a kid. Yeah. Michael Rooker is always good in pretty much everything. He's always great. Yeah. Great actor. Uh, number 18 is it 2017. Uh, slow. Where was a great movie. Part two is like number 49 or something like that. (laughs) Fucking part one's great, man. Part one. Honestly, I I rewatched all three of them. This like within the last year, some of my favorite movies. I like all those movies. I think they're yeah, all. Good. I really yeah. champed this when it came out, man, and I really like part two also. I thought, like as a whole, it's they're fucking good, man. They're well done. Dark. I love the opening what? scene with Georgie, man. It's it's, it's good, man. It's what, just, what was that? Seventeen, two thousand seventeen. Yeah, two 
dude, fuck, that movie's old as shit already. Six years. Remember when we did this shit, man? Oh, man, it's crazy. Jesus. <laughs> um. Oh, okay. Here we go again. Uh, number 17 is Needful Things, 1993. Never seen Good it. Good movie. Very interesting. Yeah, Max von Sydow was in the movie. Shit, man. Yeah, he plays the devil. Right. It's just been a while since I've seen it. Like, yeah. JT Walsh is in that movie, too. That's got to be one of JT Walsh's later movies, right? He didn't live too long. Mm, Mad to Plumbers. It's just been a while since I've seen I'm just reading some of the guys. Ed Harris, yeah. Ed Harris is good in it. Bonnie Bedelia. Yeah, okay. Um, number six. Did you say Bonnie Bedelia is in that? Yeah. She's in Salem's Lot. Yep. That's why I just said, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, that's crazy. She, there, she's in a couple she, of them, too, though. She there got two. Go. Uh, yes. s- number 16, Silver Bullet, 85. Love, Love Silver it. Bullet. Which the book is called Circle of the Werewolf, I believe. Yep. Cycle. It's a uh, cycle. Or cycle. Did I say circle? And it's got, yeah. yeah. It's got the uh, illustrated. It's illustrated. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, dude, honestly, like, I fucks with Silver Bullet heavy. Ah, oh, dude, I love it. It made it both of our top tens. And that old guy's like, so you want a Silver Bullet, eh? Hey, <laughs> that's, you know, that's a Dino De Laurentiis too, isn't it? Didn't Dino De Laurentiis yep, produce that one yep, too? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Because who was I just listening to on like a an audio? Oh, was it Don? Yeah, Don Coscarelli in his uh, book. He he got fired about, from that movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did like a lot of work on it, bro. But <laughs> right, right, this did not work out, man. Man, Cosker, yeah, I think, yeah, fuck. There's so many of these stories of directors like he who wanted to hold off and the werewolf until the end. Well, Toby Hooper, like he, same thing with him too, right? Like, didn't he? He got fired off a bunch of films too. He got fired off that what the dark. Yeah, the dark. he got fired off the dark. He got, I think, it was a couple in a row that he was involved in, and he got fired off because he was being a dick or some shit. But this I is Hooper was being not. A dick. Being There's a no dick, way Hooper bro. was being a dick. He was Hooper just was being like, like hey, non. Man. No, it's, <laughs> yeah, I think it's, it's creative. It was. He was being non-productive. Maybe it's, let's have a coffee break. It's creative differences. I believe was something. I, re- I remember reading. Maybe it was the dark. I don't know which one it was, but it was something. Creative difference was that he wanted to smoke an ounce of marijuana, and they did. <laughs> like he wanted to chill and smoke some weed and drink some coffee and they wanted to shoot the movie. Like clearly there's a little bit of creative conflict there. Everybody on Texas Chainsaw sets like in a in like 300 degree heat. He's over in the corner smoking a joy. He's, he's like, he's like, hey guys, chill, chill. It's going to be fine. <laughs> Man, this was the movie that made me fall in love with Gary Busey before he went like completely bad shit crazy. But he like, was on the cusp of going crazy there. He was, yeah. I think he was always nuts, but like I used to, I remember going to the video stores as, as a kid and stuff. And every time I saw Busey, that was in i'd rent it i had to i there was something about that guy man. you he see just, he made me laugh wait 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 did you see Busey? that's a buy you go up to the <laughs> register and you're like do you see Busey? that's a buy i want that t-shirt i just you found him to be the most entertaining gary Busey movies he's like who <laughs> who gary he was Busey so entertaining to me he was so entertaining to me man i loved him. he was like my favorite actor Busey's for so the best. long yeah oh man it's- yeah. Oh shit, crazy. All right, number 15, we got Dolores Claiborne from 1995. All right, so top 15 here. Oh yeah, right, Jennifer Jason Lee, which I love her. I'm a big big Jennifer Lee Gen- Jennifer Jason Lee fan. She's a great actress, man. Super super underrated. Um What's that movie that <laughs> Kino put out a few years ago? It's like mid or fuck is that one? Heart of She's, Darkness? Is that one Heart of Dark? That one's fucking I don't know. Jennifer Jason Lee. Did you just make something up? No, No, but Kino put that out, and I don't know if she's in it. No, there's there's like a it's I think Midnight's in the in the title song. I can't remember, but anyways, like an early '90s kind of thriller, weird. It has like a Lynchian feel to it. It's really bizarre. Um, fuck, is she ever good in that movie, man? It's Heart of Darkness, I bet. Yeah, because the cover looks all weird. It has like a girl's back on it. Yeah, that could be it. Yeah, I'll look it up. Shit, Keep man, that's, that's, that's really bugging me. And I've, I've actually, I've totally like, I'll find it. Recommended this. Heart of I, Midnight. I, yeah, Heart of Midnight. That's it. Heart of Midnight. Yeah, it, <laughs> we were both right and wrong. <laughs> yeah. So I was, I was there, but yeah, that movie is really fucking bizarre. And like, she's so good in it. Yeah. This is the one I was thinking of. The case, at least. Yeah. Yeah. I, I highly, this. I highly recommend that, man. Like, she knocks out the park, man. It's, it's a, it's a strange one. Good cast, though. Kathy Bates, Jennifer Lee, Jason Lee. I, I. I believe I need to like maybe read the book and watch the movie. <laughs> it's like this is one that's kind of eluding me. Strange. Oh yeah. I'm not seeing Kathy Bates, but I'm seeing oh, you're talking about Dolores Colbert and Claiborne. Yeah, yeah. Now, so. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Uh here we go, man. Number 14. One of my favorites. I could watch this movie all day because I love it. Maximum Overdrive, 1986. Who okay. made who? I love it. 
It's so much too. fun. It's such a fun Best movie. bad movie ever made. Some of it is. I think Emilio Estevez. Movie. See, I'm a big Estevez fan. So like everything that he's in, I'll Dude, always I check love out Emilio. Shit. He's great, Dude, man. You don't love, you don't love Max Motor Drive. You don't I've love watched Emilio. Stakeout and another it. Stakeout like just a couple of weeks ago, back to back. Another Stakeout kind of shitty, but Stakeout's fun with R- Richard Dreyfuss and shit. They got I remember that movie. It's been mm-hmm. a lot. Is Rosie O'Donnell in that? It's no mighty. No, Ducks. she's in the second one, another Stakeout. And she is fucking so annoying. She ruins the movie. Like legitimately so annoying. You love Rosie. She's your Fuck, favorite. Man, dude, but her <laughs> character is like meant to be annoying, but she's already annoying in like real life. So it's like you just can't just separate the two. Annoying. She's playing herself. <laughs> she's literally playing herself in the movie. Fuck Rosie O'Donnell. All right. <clears throat> Number 13, Storm of the Century, 1999. Um, absolutely fucking love it. Probably in my top 10 for sure. Um I think it's super underrated. Oh, very interesting scene. Never seen it. Okay. <laughs> exactly. So, it's, it's, okay, <laughs> so I said. yeah, I, I, I've only seen it once. I don't really remember, but it says a small Island community, the same one from Kings Dolores Claiborne is visited by twin threats. So use the same location or the same fictional Island, whatever they did. Yeah. They just have a crazy ass. It, it, like if it ever snows like a lot, Dave, and you like, don't go to work for some reason and you have like all day to burn that's a movie to watch i remember literally getting stuck at work in a snowstorm had to stay at work overnight and went over to walmart and you know looked in the dump bin and there was storm of the century and i was like all right this is like six hours or something i watched this fucking loved it (laughs) and it was it was like perfect atmosphere to watch it too you know what i mean with it being literally snowed in hmm yeah, I'm gonna have to revisit that one. I'll I check sometime. it out. But I, I hate that they put it out on like Kino put it out, but they didn't remaster it. Dude, yeah, I was so mad much. over that. Well, that's that expensive. Bull- that was such bullshit, dude. That was a it was big just dis- bullshit. I actually never even bought it because of that. Yeah, yeah. let somebody else remaster. do it, huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's <clears throat> that's my issue. Is like, okay, well, let some let someone else do it then. You know what I mean? Don't hold up the fucking rights with your stupid DVD right. that nobody wants. Yeah, why half ass some shit? Especially Kino, who does such good work. Like, what the fuck's up with that? But I know. Getting greedy. All right. And number- you're telling me how can it be that expensive? Just it's two movies. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, no, like, it was it was edited on tape, so they have to go through and match up the original elements with the tape. Oh, it's is that why? Okay. I feel yeah, like that's I- what happened when they had to do with Pee Wee's Adventures, that show. The Pee Wee yeah, show. They had to do the entire fucking show. Right. That's why subspecies four is in on Blu-ray because they have to do that with it, and they're looking for the elements and shit. Really? Mm-hmm. So when they do that, yeah, it's edit. They ed- that's why a lot of problem with movies is they're not shot on videos, but they're edited on tape. So all the elements right. are still taped. So if you can't find the original negatives to match up with it, and when yeah, you got yeah. some ten dollar fucking movie nobody's going to care about, like mutilations or fucking uh, truth or dare, and and the elements are either lost or nobody's going to be like, I'm not paying fucking fifty thousand dollars to fucking match up fucking truth or dare or critical madness. Yeah, yeah. And people are like, I'm I mean, it depends how much HD. if you. But and for the record, I love but, Truth dude, or Dare. I don't know because yeah. if you just fucking put like a pretty cool slipcover on it, you'll make your money back. Plus <laughs> pretty much, you probably will. <laughs> you probably will. <laughs> oh man, slipcover crazy man. All right, number twelve is uh, I guess I don't know. Doctor Sleep, two thousand nineteen. That's good. I, I don't know if I'd <clears> put it in like the upper echelon of King yet. But I've only seen it the one it time. It does seem like it's a little like higher low. I don't know how to say that higher low. Whatever number twelve seems higher. I on feel the like list. I need to see it again. I do I need to watch it. It, it made ha- my top ten that year. Mine too. You know what's really weird? Like the four K came out and the extended version is only on the Blu Ray. I know. I know. I'm never gonna watch my 4K. Talked about that. I'm never gonna watch that four K. So weird. So strange. if you're already watching a three hour movie, what's three hours and ten minutes? Right. And fucking so weird. Um. Number eleven, uh, Pet Cemetery, eighty nine. Good movie. L- I, honestly, like top five for me, probably. Dead is better. Dead Love is it. better. And the four K looks great too. You- <laughs> Fred Gwynn is that he's, just, he's so uh, good in it, man. Where uh, Judd tells a story about uh, the fucking son coming back. He's yeah. like digging by the fucking basement window and he turns around. That seems cool. Oh, that whole movie has so many creepy elements. It's weird. I can't it believe does. it's that scary. It's still scary. Well, yeah, going back to that post, it's, it's cheesy, it's scene. scary. Zelda. Yeah. Fuck Zelda. Going back to that that post that someone made about, you know, your favorite um, you know, childhood villains and monsters that scare you and shit. A lot of people had like three characters from this movie listed. 
It's crazy. <laughs> like just, Pet, just, Cemetery a or not, Pet Cemetery has a lot of like, you know. Dude, Pet Cemetery is one of the scariest movies I saw as a kid. I agree. It's interesting. I used, I used to have nightmares of Zelda. It used but, to fight like but dumb shit uh, scared me too, like Leprechaun. Just the the kid going on like that used to horrify me, man. Like that was something that was like used burnt to. into my mind. Like it's just so terrifying because like that's awful. And it's it's, it's messy it's too fucking, It's not like he got hit by like heel, a, bro. Yeah, it's not like getting hit i get it doesn't matter like what you get hit by as a, as a like a toddler or whatever but you know no, it like, matters it, like if you get hit by a rig somebody off, to, like, dude, they're not even fucking in pe- they're in pieces man yeah dude like a rig you just literally be nothing left like yeah like yeah, think hot. about it like it's I've one second beer. you're a walking thinking human being the next second you're a pile of goo it's really? always really disturbing to think like when you get eaten by something too when a human being is eaten like as food yeah you're like, Ugh. yeah that's yeah. crazy rough. Or okay. with like some serial killer like kills somebody and uses them for a sex object. You're like, this person had to die because this person had to, this is fucked up. It, it's it's worse, dude. It does matter how you die, man. It, it does. does actually because when I when I was <laughs> back back when I was like in high school and shit, like I was well, like most of us were as horror fans. We were probably pretty fascinated with serial killers and stuff. And I remember watching this documentary on on Ted Bundy, and you know back in the '90s, and they were talking about how um, he was. Uh, a necrophiliac and i was like oh god damn that's really fucked up and then they go into detail about it where he would <clears throat> he would you know rape and murder one of his victims but he would come back to the body and like then fuck five, the bodies yeah like a week later and fuck like this rotten corpse i'm like oh my god and like that Ew, whole idea got stuck in my mind and i was like oh my god that's really fucked up <laughs> like, they think gary ridgeway used to do the same thing that's why oh. ted bundy talked about that he said i think the guy's going back to the corpses but Dude, anyways I, if anybody if anybody should have people- died Ted Bundy is a good candidate. Find a big one. He says, if anybody has the to most, fight it. He is such, oh man, the story of Ted Bundy is crazy, man. Like that guy, oof, different level. Yeah. Different level. Awful, but, um, awful person. Uh, number 10. Hot take. Ted Bundy was a bad guy. <laughs> He's a bad guy. He's a bad guy. Um, yeah. So getting into the top 10 here, probably no surprises that this is in here. Maybe the place. I don't know. But Creep Show from 1982. Love it. What number was that? Mm-hmm. I Number like 10. it a lot. It's no, my top it. five. I love it. <laughs> top five. Um, the, the only one I don't like is the, I don't even not like it. It's just the weakest to me is the Father's Day one. I just think it's boring. I want my cake, Bedelia. Yeah, yeah. He I mean, called me a bitch. <laughs> now that one got a great cockroach segment. Yeah, it does, it does have a good cockroach segment. That um, guy's got so many good one-liners. E.G. Marshall in that movie. Yeah, he's just not. He's the last fucking dinosaur. You can't find a tar pit. I assume both of you guys is. <laughs> well, you can take your kids is... to Disney World on your welfare check because you'll be out of a fucking job. <laughs> um, I, I I assume you guys like the Liam Neeson. Um, Leslie Nielsen. Leslie Nielsen. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, that one's awesome. Uh, Leslie... <laughs> Liam that Neeson. would be a different movie. <laughs> Uh, Liam Neeson. So th- those are the I assume some that's revenge your favorite. Both of you guys. Yeah, something that tied you over. That's my something favorite. Yeah, that yeah. one's great. Yeah. Yes, that's I my figured favorite. So my what, what's mine? Yeah, the crate. Know. There's the, the crate. Come on, bro. No, it's not the crate, or is it the uh, meteor one? It's the meteor one. Jordan oh, Hale. meteor shit! That's my favorite segment. In <laughs> all Steve, the Stephen King both one. Of the creep shows. You lunkhead! I love that one too. I love it, I, and it's actually Stevie. like ends super downer too. The end is the best. I just feel like Stephen King. Rain. He was taking notes from Oliver Reed in that performance, and like I think he was <laughs> fucking totally shit faced during that. Dude, he was during, taking his. Dude, role he probably was. Fucking, what year was that? Eighty two. He was this taking is, his role from the. When Beverly did he Hills make buildings. Maximum Overdrive? Eighty six. But that was that whole era. It was like the early eighties yeah, and stuff. He was having. Stephen King he had about era. three or four years where he was just like <laughs> he even admits he doesn't really remember do, too much from those years. I'm like, oh my god. Um. Yep. All right. So number nine, Salem's Lot, seventy nine. Great movie. Yeah, we'll get into that more here. Uh, number eight. Oh, shit. I completely actually forgot about this, but uh, Cujo from 1983. Good you movie. You know, it's a been a good, while, though. good one-time watch. I feel like there's, yeah, the replay value. I in. feel like you're kind of right. Cujo's not overly that hot. It's very suspenseful and like edge of your seat for one watch. Good cast. D. Walls is, is, is good in the film. Um, it, You know, you feel for a man because she's just like, She's just such a likable person, right? So D. Wallace terrifying. is an underrated scream queen, dude. She makes yeah. so much good stuff. Yeah, terrifying. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel I, like I, she might be kind of crazy though. <clears throat> Who is it? I, I met her before. She was really she didn't want to stop talking, man. It was ridiculous. She was super nice. Super nice. 
You know, it was really very, nice. Very PJ Souls is really nice. I could have met her actually. She was like right. I next didn't even to her meet her, that... but she asked me to take a picture. <clears throat> I'm not for, even joking. When... She was so sweet. She was literally right next to D. You Wallace really at nice. Horcon a few years ago. Like at the same time, it's crazy. Tom Atkins is really nice. Tom Atkins was a sweetheart too. Yeah, both times I met him, he was great. No, almost everybody was actually really nice. I met, but I don't ever fucking. Just Frankie Han was purpose. was really honestly. Nice I was going to tell us when we got to Larry Cohen film, but the, the grumpiest person I ever met was Larry Cohen. <laughs> he did <laughs> not want to be there, man. He was just so, I didn't even get a picture with him, man. He was so um, grumpy. I got the autograph and then he, I was like, okay, I guess no, he was fuck. He just did not want to be there. I, I honestly, I can't think of a single person that I had a, I don't think I had any bad experience. Yeah, it I, wasn't. I had a bad experience with Felissa Rose's like handler or whatever the hell they are. Really? She was kind of rude a little bit. Hmm. Um, but you know, I, I I guess Corey Feldman at a distance seemed like a huge dick <laughs> at the convention he was at that I was at. Probably super overpriced. The way oh, Eric yeah. Roberts was set up because he was only doing selfies things that was weird. It was kind of awkward at first. Oh, really? But he was nice. It was just awkward. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, number seven, Gerald's game, two thousand seventeen. Too high. Way too high. I believe. Yeah, I am. It's oh, it's I a good movie. Twenty two is better than that. I'm yep. great. I'm Agreed. totally agreeing with you guys. That's way too fucking high for that. Um, I wouldn't even have my top <clears throat> like number thirty, maybe probably. This is actually one of my personal favorite ones. Uh, from number six, uh, two thousand seven is The Mist. Love oh, yeah. the mist. Love the Dar- mist. Dar- and Darabont. I feel like it, as years go by, it's like it becoming better. one of those classics, like Carrie or The Shining. I yeah. agree. Yeah, yeah there's it's, something it, in the mist. It's and it's an, better in black and white if you've ever ever watched the, that yeah. version yeah i've done that before yeah, they, really, they have the blu-ray that has the black and white version yeah it's I'd, really i would want to rewatch the mist it's been years i saw that in i saw it in the theater i saw the original i saw it when it came out in theaters i dude i saw it in the, uh i don't lo- think we got the, it here <clears throat> probably not you don't no. get a lot of stuff no um but i went to the theater they had a classic movie night where like the guy like curated it and like they did i think they did like a stephen king like month or something and the mist like you could tell he was like a big fan of the mist the guy that curated it and like he's just like standing there looking at his watch it's like me carly and like two other people and the entire thing he's like he's like huh i guess i guess this is it (laughs) he seems so bummed because he probably has to meet like like they probably expect him to bring in to only show movies that are gonna you know bring in people to watch you know yeah and he seemed kind of disappointed i mean i was disappointed too i'm like dude come on you fucks it's the mist <laughs> right yeah good stuff good stuff um number five all right the uh the dead zone from 1983 we have talked about this many many times we reviewed it yep. uh, i love dead zone one Great of the movie. cronenberg one of the cronenberg shows i think we did two cronenbergs or did we just uh, do one yeah two and we should do a volume three yeah, so this Which is one of the ones you do on volume one. Uh, I think they're in order, actually, in terms of when they came out. No, yeah, because you guys what? did Rabbit, the second one. Yeah, because uh, I know we, no. I know we did Video Drone, Video Drone. Yeah, I know, because I did Rabbit in one of them. The Dead Zone and Video Drone actually came out in the same year, which is crazy. No, because the one I was on one of them, and I think I did Scanners, Rabbit, and Dead Zone. <clears throat> the oh, other okay. one you guys did was Video Drone. Oh, with Watson, Watson, and the brood, right? Would you guys yeah. do the fly? Didn't might not have. No, no, we no, did, shivers. We, he did, yeah, shivers, did shivers, the brood, and video drum. We never did the fly Cronenberg because okay, yeah. we were going to do, do the Lord. fly. Um, I think the franchise. Yeah, yeah we won't. We won't do Cronenberg. Um, um, fly. No, we'll do brood the fly made, did remake. Brood, what? Did brood make your Hall of Fame? I don't remember. I, I don't remember. Did, but I do love the brood. If it, if it ever we ever get seventy nine, the brood's gonna make the whole thing. I think it's one of my oh, personal. That's favorites. the best chance for movies. To make. I love the brood, man. It's fucking it's awesome. It's my favorite Cronenberg. Yeah, yeah. It's it has great. Oliver Reed in it. Yep, it does. Um. All right. So number four, Christine from nineteen eighty three. Good placing. Uh. Yeah, dude. You know, Christine. I feel like a lot of times it doesn't get like some people just like you know kind of Shit wave it, it off as a killer car movie but it, it's a lot more than that it, it is a lot more than that for sure it is and i like lo- honestly man the 58 plymouth man those are awesome cars i'd prefer if it was black but i'm I'm just not a fan of red vehicles something about red man something about I, red 
it's yeah, like cherry moods. Yeah, yeah I, I just, love. I've never yeah, liked I, cars. I mean, that movie's a character study. Yeah, Robert my last Blossoms like, is great in it too, man. My last like five vehicles have been Midnight Black. <laughs> <laughs> Purposely go out of my way for that. No, I like black cars too. Black's yeah. a good color. I like red, white, blue, and black, I and mean, just had kind of colors like that. Just simple, very yeah, versatile colors. You know, uh, no, the Christine's got one of my favorite lines in the ever in any movie. They had to pick Moochie Welsh up with a little shovel. Isn't that what you do with pieces of shit? You pick yeah. up with a shovel. That's my <laughs> oh favorite. My That's one of my top no. ten favorite lines in a movie. That I say it all one. the time. They had to pick Moochie Welch up with a shovel. I feel like we need do to with do with pieces of shit. Either... You pick them up with a shovel. <laughs> how, how, what, what's the best way to do Christine? We do a carpenter spotlight or a killer car. Ooh, let's do killer car. Or, or, I st- see the car. Or, or Stephen King. Oh man, I, I never seen the car. The car. Cars fun. We can the do Max Overdrive and Christine and trucks. We can do three Stephen King, three killer cars. Yep. Yeah, we could. We could do that. Mm. I like All it. Right. Or we could just <laughs> okay. do Overdrive and Christine together and say fuck trucks. I kind of want to rewatch trucks just to see it because I, I don't think I ever it. finished it. I don't <laughs> even think I've seen it at all, but all right. Okay. So number three is, yeah, probably no surprise, but Misery at 1990. Yeah. Are these horror adaptations? Because we're missing non-horror adaptations here. Yeah, it's just horror. Okay, because I was going to say, where the fuck's the Green Mile, the Shank Redemption, and um, Standby? You butchered the fuck out of that one. Shawshank? Yeah, there's... a Shanksaw. Shanksaw, it's delicious. I would say some some of Stephen King's probably more notable and, you know, what you'd say best films. (laughs) Yeah, I want to name a movie like The Steak Shank. (laughs) <laughs> steak shank. Steak shank. Steak shank. Uh, you ever see law abiding citizen that's the steak shank yeah no but uh, <laughs> t-bone to right? the neck bro i still can't believe oh, rob the guy with the directed this steak, movie yeah, smart rob yeah. reiner man fuck it's his last meal and he, st- he eats the t-bone and stabs the fuck out of someone it's just Good such idea. a funny funny thing for rob reiner to to you know to direct what, I just always, yeah yeah rob yeah. Ryder directed a fucking stephen king movie but not Wes craven what world is this i know man like it's just so weird man it's just strange fucking meathead he's doing another stephen king he movie. is meathead he is meathead yeah um okay number two is carrie from 1976 good call i mean i don't disagree with that at all i mean personally if i was making a top 10 list it yeah I don't think it'd be number two, but but then again, maximum overdrive probably a lot higher than most people. It's like when it when it comes down <laughs> it to didn't even did he even make this list? Yeah, yeah, it was it was on there. It's like when I make a Wes Craven list, like Shocker is like usually my second favorite movie. What? No, or like you're That's insane. Sad. Oh, I love Shocker, man. P- Horace Pinker's Bro, like it's Nightmare on Elm Street, then Last House on the Left. For me. It's it's like it's it's an electrified version then, of like, fucking Nightmare on Elm stairs, Street. But Horace screen. Pinker, no, Hills have eyes for me. Horace then Pinker is, I love the soundtrack to the movie. It's fantastic. And also Horace Pinker is just, he's bad shit, dude. It's bad shit. It's a bad movie, honestly, but I love it. I would rather, I'm not saying it's a good I like rather watch fucking My Soul to I like Take, it. which yeah, is a better, it, over shocker? better ripoff. It's not Craven's finest moment, but I mean, if I was <laughs> to put it in, if I was to make a best of list, yeah, I think I, I think shocker is one movie. of my least favorite uh craven films hills and you know last house like i think they're you know they would definitely be higher on the list but it's just i think craven's got four bona fide classics and like five good movies like and that's that's really good movies you know what i mean Mm -hmm. that's hard for a director to have five really good movies yeah prince of darkness i I think i think serpent in the rainbows oh you guys are talking that's carpenter prince of darkness is carpenter (laughs) but not prince uh, prince i was just going back to Carpenter. prince of darkness is like gee that one always makes me fucking laugh it's like yeah, I mean, she always talks shit I about that. Weak. But I was, I, was I don't understand. Talk. It's one of my favorites. It's no, like the reason why I brought favorite. Prince of Darkness is because it's always like boring from movies. Carpenter is because it's I like one movies of those that make movies. you think. That movie doesn't make you think anything except for like yeah, when's this over? No, yeah, was, not at all. Prince of Darkness. That's think a Quatermass movie. You don't no, understand the anti matter. It's a it's a modern day Quatermass movie along with Life Force, and there's another one that I always say is a modern day Quatermass movie. Life Force sucks too. Yeah, see, Prince of Darkness to me, you that like came out wrong. Prince of Darkness sucky. to me is like shocker for Wes Craven. It's like one Dude, of those. Prince of Darkness that... is amazing. You guys are crazy. No, no, no. I like Prince of Darkness. I'm just saying it's like shocker to me. I really like it where JP okay. doesn't really care for them. That's why I brought up Prince oh, yeah, of Darkness. You know, it's like I, the shocker. I think shocker is actually a bad movie that I like. <laughs> I think Prince of Darkness is a good movie that most people don't like. Yeah. 
and no, I agree with that. But it's I kind feel of like, like most people do like me. Prince of Darkness. Yeah, it's weird. I'd say fi- I'd say 75 to 60 40. It's probably I mean, it's like my least favorite Carpenter. Film. I think it's just kind of misunderstood. I think the point of it was is just kind of missed in translation. But I, I it's got fucking Alice Cooper in it, man. Come on. I, I mean, it looks great and it sounds film. great. But it just doesn't have the substance for me. I it, yeah. uh, to me, it all it, it might have too much substance. Yeah. I agree with that. It's the idea is huge. The idea is insanely creepy and scary. Yeah. When the idea that they're broadcasting fucking dreams to you to try to prevent the future from the Antichrist coming back to life and they and your dream, the first thing you see is a fucking dark figure standing on a church steps and it says, This is not a dream. This is a broadcast. And it's fucking horrifying and everybody has the same dream. That shit right there is nightmare fuel. That's better than ninety percent of horror movies on point right there. Just because I think so. I think it's an amazing. I, I feel movie. you. I feel you. Sorry. I put I, it at number three. It goes I've watched the thing, it a couple Christine, times. Prince of Darkness. Wait, then number the three. All, this, on Carpenter. Yeah. All time Carpenter. Yeah. For me. No Not shit. Not saying best. I'm saying favorite. Because well, I know what best, you're saying, but yeah, yeah. that surprises me either way. Yeah. You know, it's the thing. Christine, <laughs> Prince of Darkness, In the Mouth of Madness, Big Trouble, Little China. Yeah, the thing is my favorite Carpenter movie too, man. I love it. I mean, the thing is and literally it's probably the best. arguably the best horror film ever made. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. <laughs> I can watch the thing all the that movie just it's so <laughs> it's amazing. I mean, dude, it is literally incredible. I've seen it in the theater like three it's times. So dude. dark, it's just like the ending of that <laughs> movie is so show, terrifying. See that bitch. It's legit oh, it's the best like movie. A, a scary fucking ending, dude. That would be horrifying. And not only that, like I love the characters, fucking <clears throat> I love the paranoia. Dude, mm-hmm. every did line we, in the did, movie is gold every line yeah and the yeah. effects are just so everything and, about that movie is so I ain't going with shot windows. so well <laughs> i say go with them <laughs> and that's the best fucking that has the best <laughs> character actors in that movie everybody's great every so line totally, in the movie is gold so we totally went from fucking yeah right back to carpenter here okay all right <laughs> so number one is number one is of course the well, shining the shinning the from shinning. 1980 yeah of course it is I Will it be. be everyone's number one of 1980, though? Absolutely that is not. The question. Really? No. Well, I don't make no. my list best. I make favorites, right? So every once in a while, if there's a movie that I think is vastly superior and to my favorites, I will. But I don't think 1980. I, there's movies that literally I'm talking like top 10 favorite movies of all time from 1980. So, so neither of you guys have. The so if you're talking from a filmmaking standpoint, the Shining's got to be in your top 10, but I'm I not know, saying anything. Like I know it's this, in my top 10. This okay, will get well, brought up on the show. That's good to know. But that like if you're to. if you're comparing like actual filmmaking, like we're talking about best movies here, not favorites. Do you, you have to put that your feelings aside here? So if you're comparing The Shining to Cannibal Holocaust on a level of filmmaking and and reject the idea of, of <laughs> influence and what it's done for the genres, but we're just talking movie versus movie. Forget everything well, else. Well, they're not going for the same thing. They're not trying to accomplish the same thing at all. Exactly. I think but they're I, comparable. I mean, I yeah. do too. Yeah, and I mean for what they're trying for to what accomplish, they, what they, I know what, yeah, I know like, I'm they're get not shot in the face shi- for this, but like fucking Campbell Holocaust isn't a shiny movie that's like no, perfectly it, framed and shit. It's which made is in a shiny. certain way on purpose. No, 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 they can be made completely different, but they can still. I'm not comparable, but you can still pick one or the other. Gun the head, yeah. gun the head. Though representation of 1980, if you had to give me like three movies to represent 1980. It would, it would be, be the, the shining, shining cannibal movie. holocaust and friday the 13th and that i'm not saying favorites are best i'm just saying those three i think are the ones that were the most influential from that year yeah in general in yeah, the world so. definitely friday the 13th 100 sure maybe maniac after that yeah friday the 13th definitely belongs that i mean everybody i mean that shit's just influenced the shit out of everything yeah right? Right. so you you can't not have that conversation but if we're talking friday like 13th, but best made it's like gotta be the shining you know what i'm uh, the the fucking changeling's probably in there if we're talking best made yeah the changeling is another and yeah georgie e. scott you know great acting <coughs> creepy as shit man that you guys really know cool. my number one from 80 not uh, really on, I, i'm a little bit lost on it because it could go so many different ways well, you should be because i don't know yet <laughs> yeah <laughs> like no, I, I've, I've been just thinking about this a lot and i have no fucking clue what like i have a top be. 25 list made i just need to kind of organize Me it too. but i'm looking at going i don't know what the fuck jp's is because i know I, my I really my don't. personal favorites from 80 and and dave's are very similar might be different orders but i don't know about yours well, um, I have. About, I bet we have so much similarities in our top twenty-five. I bet there's probably only like like. I out feel of like all there's the going to be a movies. lot of similarities in our top ten. Yeah. Well, everybody's going to have Lisa Shining in there. I bet. 
You think? There'll be a couple. I, I, they I should, should I, be. I know JP I doesn't. It should be. JP always talks about how he's not a big fan of it, which I think is insane. Like, come on. What do you, you mean? You know how many movies on. made my top hundred from 1980? When establishing I shot of the oh, Overlook two? Hotel, man. I, it's one I had of my like favorite shots movies. in cinema. I had eight movies make my top hundred from 1980. I like The Shining. Dude, pretty much my top 10 is like, it's like 85 to me. There's so many movies in the, in the top 10 that are like legitimately my all time favorite movies. <laughs> I think, cra- you know, as much crazy. as I like 1985, I think 1980 is a better year as a whole. And, and 1985 is no, my all favorite movies. Better. In my top 50, remember I had like five or six from eight, like 1985 and 1980 makes up a, like a ton of my top 50. It's crazy. My top 100, I definitely, Day of the Dead, Return of the Living Dead, Demons, Reanimator, um, 85 fright night probably and uh phenomenon are all on my top yeah. 100 no totally that's six hundred percent hundred percent and the other ones would make my top 200 or 150 silver bullet house and uh friday friday eight or friday five house friday is the top be. 50 for me i love house yeah it's so crazy how many movies from those two years are just like barrack there, there's, there's about, there's about like six six movies from 85 that are my top 50 i would like to start 100. naming everything from 1980 but that's for a couple more weeks down the down the road actually there's three of my top 20 it's coming soon we should actually announce it like it's we're gonna be yeah doing no that. we we did announce it i think do we actually the first week of march first week of march yeah so okay yeah but i assume we're probably gonna have to do that one on a friday we're gonna have to do it in two sittings we're gonna have to do uh 25 to 11 and then we're gonna have to do the 10 well we'll do the 10 first yeah no i think we do the 25 to 11 that well, actually would be maybe that. we can do the 25 to 11 on monday i don't <sighs> think gonna everybody's gonna time. do the 25 to 11 right we'll ask them we'll figure it i don't think it would be that hard to compile the 25 to 11 for unless else. why don't we could do what we did on you guys did and just we could all do the 25 to 11 and do it in one sitting but they'd have to be quick because yeah, it's yeah, not but, really fair if it's like your number twenty five and you're gonna spend ten minutes talking about it when it's somebody's seven. It's like, bro, just fucking you put it at twenty five. You get like a, a you get like forty five seconds on. All right, well, what, what we can do, hmm, we can structure this different because if we do twenty, like like how we did the nineteen, um, what was the last one we just did? Or the two thousand twenty two show. So yeah, um, so when we did the twenty five to eleven. The, the, the focus point of the show was to preview 2023. So we just, we quickly ripped through and then do 2023 kind of thing. So if we figured out what our next one was good, so we could do the top 25 or 25 to 11 and then maybe preview the next one. No, nah, because then that's like in between. No, because we wouldn't, we then can't we start. do the drawing until the end of number right. one. I, this one I know is different. Like, I don't want it to be an extended. I think that we should do top 25 in 1980 because it's such a strong year. I think it should be in one show. Do you mean we like we re- put it the out in one show, but record it yeah. in two settings? Yeah. Okay, oh, okay. Well, so if we 25. do that, I mean, we could just do two weeks. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. It'd yeah. just be an epic best. And that way we have that big gap in between it. And I can, we can, I can pi- compile a lot of numbers too. Yeah. yeah. We could do that. Well, yeah. honestly, I mean, we could even <clears throat> like, just hear me out, but we could record a show on the Monday. Like I agree. Small. And then do it on Friday. Yeah. 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 yeah we could do that. Sense. Yeah. Yeah. So do we start? And, and, we start with twenty five to eleven, and then do the Friday top ten. And if, and if we st- yeah, if no, we no, start no. on we Friday, do, on we Monday do we'll do twenty five to eleven, and then the Friday we'll do the top ten. Yeah, and then so that when we're done top ten on Friday, then we'll New Year will be revealed, and then we'll uh, just do a quick preview. Well, I don't know how long it's gonna be. On we Friday don't have to. Stuff. We'll do the preview on the next show. Yeah, we could do that too. Yeah, because we'll be okay. tired. And, and if, even if we start at like four o'clock on a Friday, we can be done by like fucking ten, probably. Right. 11, yeah, by eleven. Are. Eleven. Like six, seven hours on the on that show. We'll be done by ten. Ten thirty. I'm yeah. drinking. Well, I mean, I don't want to drink because if I go out that <laughs> night, I don't want to be that shit faced before I leave. <laughs> Why? Just do it. No. Oh. Yolo. All right. Yolo. Uh, anyway, uh, real quick, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because we did spend a lot of time on the other Stephen King thing. Oh, um, <laughs> yeah, but uh, these are just uh, different adaptations that are currently in different stages of development. Um, some are, you know, pretty much done. Others are, you know, barely started. Uh, so we got the boogeyman, which I know there was a adaptation back in the eighties of that. I think it was, uh, it was actually came out in what? 94. 91 it was 94 
It was like a, on a tape called like Stephen King Night Shift Collection. It was with the woman in the room. I used to watch it as a kid and it used to scare me really bad. Right, right, right. It's really yeah, amateur. So, um, yeah, right. Um, so that was from Night Shift and uh, I believe mm, that cool. it is starring a uh, bunch of people I don't know, but it's scheduled to be released on Hulu this year. So that's cool. We'll that Who? Out. You? <laughs> yeah. Hulu. Um, next Hulu. up, we have Salem's Lot. This is um, the uh, reboot type readaptation thing, Majig, that was supposed to come out in 2021 initially, and then it got delayed into 20 September 22, um, and then they didn't um, something. I think they shift. It was supposed to come out on like HBO Max or something, but they shifted their their idea to do. Um, like theatrical stuff again instead of the streaming releases which after covid makes sense uh and then it was originally after that going to be april 21st but evil dead rise scheduled on that date so, so this is already made it's just not released yes did you yes. see who's in it robert uh, de niro plays barlow shut and up. joe pesci shut plays stalker <laughs> uh <laughs> de niro was like give me your blood i need it come on Shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. I collect um, antiques. I sell antiques. That's Lewis awesome. Pullman plays the lead. Who is it? Lewis Pullman. Who's that dickhead? I don't know. I, the only person I recognize is William Sadler. He better yeah. play Barlow. Of course. <laughs> he should play the cop. Yeah, um, okay. yeah, and then uh, the Pet Cemetery prequel, which I actually think this is a really good wow. idea. Is that going to um, do the uh, the Native American like burial grounds and shit? Yeah, yeah. So it's going to be set uh, in, I believe, um, the the mythology of the town. It's going to have a lot to do with the mythology of the town and Judd's early life and stuff like that. And then I, I think that the idea is that they go back and and to the like when the ground turns sour. You know what yeah, I mean? That's cool. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm. I actually think that's the best thing to do with Pet Cemetery uh, IP because, like, I don't want a sequel to that dog shit remake. So this this prequel <laughs> is a prequel to the original. Fi- like they're gonna write that story that leads into the original Pet Cemetery. I don't even know if it. I don't think. I just think it's. I guess it doesn't really a, matter, does it? It doesn't. I guess technically, it, right? You technically, can literally just do either. It, it, it can lead up no, I was just curious which one they were actually like. You know, you think you try to connect it to one or the other, right? But yeah, you don't have well, to, I, I think because there's already like a source material of like some of that backstory in the book, yeah, right? You're kind of just doing your own thing. You know, it's like sort of an original movie. Uh, it's kind of they're just gonna make a backstory prequel about Zelda, <laughs> like works in a factory and gets their broken back, right? <laughs> <clears throat> Um, it's supposed to come out this year. Uh, it was greenlit in 2021. I believe they filmed last year. So actually, I think Zelda got mangled by the mangler and that's why she's like, that. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> I fucking knew you were going to say that. I knew it. She's working like a laundry press. She's like, oh, she started that. I was like, he's going to say the mangler. Yeah. <laughs> <Fuck>. <laughs> that was um, funny. <laughs> a possible addition to our supernatural car trilogy of shows, uh, from a Buick eight, which was a novel in 2002, uh, which features a supernatural car. Was there um, not George Romero that? was originally attached to direct this novel back in 2005. Maybe that's you why he's doing he it no more. I don't, I take it. <laughs> um, and it doesn't say, but um, he hasn't really done anything in a while, so probably not. Um, but this was 2005 was Masters of Horror, so maybe, <laughs> maybe he was right, busy yeah. doing working on this. And then Toby Hooper took over the reins. He ain't uh, gonna do two it either. Years later, Jesus, uh, yeah, everybody's dead now. I I don't want to be alive. And uh, in basically, they stopped production in 2009 on that, and then in 2019, it was announced it was in development again. And then they said Wes Craven was gonna do it, but yeah, and then the reins got passed <laughs> to Ruggiero Diodato. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Buick H just kills everyone for some reason. Yeah, like something supernatural going on there. Stuart sure. Gordon said he was going to take the re- <laughs> dude. That's oh actually God. an idea for a movie, right? Like the the, the movie that killed me. Script, you know, yeah. it keeps it keeps the uh, script is killing the directors. Killing all these like famous directors. You know what I mean? Nobody will touch it. But I'm. But then we, our lead is like. So fucking, whatever they do, do not you know, try been to been around too long. Do not give it to Carpenter. Down on his luck. 
Yeah. Don't Eli give Ross it to like, I got to do this script. Yeah. Look, Did you imagine Carpenter after all these years is like, yeah, I'm going to come back and make a movie and bam, the script kills him. Yeah. Not cool. Um, Thomas Jane is in this one. Uh, of course he is. And then he's no word on release for that one. Um, he's like Scorsese and, and fucking uh, DiCaprio and shit, man. He's doing all these Stephen King adaptations. He's the guy. He's, he's the such guy. a he's weird dude. Do you ever hear him in interviews? He's a strange guy. Is he? No. He's got like a really gravelly voice. <laughs> Um, smoke the heavy. girl who loved Tom Gordon, um, not really a lot of production news on this one, but it was, uh, the director is Lynn Ramsey. That's a um, baseball one. Yeah. Uh, and then we have revelations. I don't even know what that is. That's just uh, actually coming soon because we don't deserve to be on this planet. Anymore. <laughs> yeah, <Revelations. laughs> That's right. We're right. We're actually on a out. book. I don't have, I don't know. That one was announced in 2020. So I'm not sure what the status of that one is uh then we have the long walk oh there you um, go which is do- being done by um which another title that romero was supposed to do in 88 was the long walk um, oh wow yeah so, i've just always been shocked that it's never been adapted man like like i said before I know. Well, what's Me it too. about uh, i people read that one walking it, it's like a murderous race of walk people are walking and they gotta like you get just, to certain things it's and like they, dystopian they get killed. future i think yeah. so it's like wacky races walk. except you get killed almost in a sense like if you don't meet like certain i can't remember exactly <laughs> all the details but you, you don't get to certain points at a certain I time whatever just, it is and you also just die walking you can get executed so it's like the shit. trail of tears without mutley yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's yeah. something along those lines people walk and they die and shit it's like yeah it's like futuristic dice trail of tears it. it's a trail yeah. of tears yeah just so, walk and you'll just die until you it's fall been over. so many years since I've um read it, this so. one is being produced by new line cinema and andre Overdell. um overdale is uh doing cordell this one. maniac cops in that <laughs> no not cordell <laughs> bro o- over riddell it has the o- what's the o with the line in it Odell. I don't know. Don't ask me. <laughs> Did you hear how I said fucking Shawshank earlier? And it's I said the, it's the autopsy of Jane Doe guy, the troll hunter guy, scary stories of telling the dark. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know. Lost Voyage name. movie. Hmm. Norwegian. The Scandinavian dude. guy. Yeah. Scandinavian guy. Right. I don't know. Yeah, this is supposed to come out this year. We'll see. But that's it for now. Oh, that's not too many. Well, it's, well, it's, it's, it's mainly stuff that's like listed for this year. So, I mean, I think that's kind of Romero this year. For, Romero for this could, year. It's, it's crazy to think if Romero had have actually directed all the adaptations, like if he had done all the adaptations that he was supposed to do, man, he would have fucking done a ton of them. Oh, yeah. he would have been didn't even get Stephen to, King. Yeah. And he did a couple. He did th- two. Yeah. Like, it's just, it's crazy. Like, I didn't know he, he was ever been, attached he to the been long like, walk. He could have been, he could have been a, as big as Mick Garris. <laughs> God. But he also uh he also Stephen King popped up in uh Night Riders too as a favor. So right. he also popped up in Sleepwalkers. Yeah, but that wasn't a George Romero. Yeah, but it was a favor. It was definitely a favor. Clyde Barker. It, was no, it was a too, favor. Like it was it was uh <laughs> it, I forget what I was gonna say. Fuck it. <laughs> All right. Well, right, I guess so. yeah, that's probably gonna conclude our very, very long intro. <laughs> And uh, yeah, we'll be back with um, with Salem's Lot and a return to Salem's Lot just after these brief messages. Yo, who this? Yo, Moods, it's your boy, the ill-mented funky child, calling you to remind you that the featured reviews on this episode contain spoilers. Aw, oh, yeah, man, that's right, brother. Thanks for the heads up, player. Now go back to being an unproductive asshole. Fuck you. I tell your listeners to stop being so dumb, silly, sensitive. Yeah. And now, our feature presentation. All right, so getting into the featured reviews here on episode 237, Stephen King, volume uno. I'm, sh- I'm sure there's going to be so many more of these. Right. We keep bringing that up, but there's got to be a lot more. All right. So from 1979, we have Salem's Lot, directed by Toby Hooper. Um, Yeah, Toby Hooper, TV miniseries. Well, it says on here three hours and 20 minutes. Huh. That's interesting because I think the Blu-ray runs in about three, three oh three or something like that. 302. Yeah. yeah, I feel like it is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, just, I don't know. I just know. 
I don't know. It says 320 in here, but that could be a typo though too. Who knows? Uh, the version on TV had more shit. It might have been. Yeah, I mean, if you just rearrange the zero and the two, that'd be three hundred two. Yeah, makes sense. But whatever. All right, Salem Slot, right. directed by Toby Hooper. We all know who Toby Hooper is. We don't need to introduce him. Um, so, quick little synopsis: a novelist and a young horror fan attempt to save a small New England town which has been invaded by vampires. Um, yeah. So, what's your guys' history with uh, with Salem's Lot? um seen it like i want to say maybe like when i was like 15 for the first time or something like that i didn't grow up with it on tv or anything Mm -hmm. but i i've seen it a handful of times um first time i watched for me which is weird it's the biggest toby hooper blind spot the biggest stephen king blind spot i don't know why i didn't see it there's no reason for it it's one i always knew about i knew a lot about it you've never seen the movie you did mention that it's so crazy to think it's that weird. Like, I don't even get it. It doesn't even it, make sense. Yeah. Like it's a Toby Hooper film. It's a Stephen King adaptation. It's a very well known. Like it's just all those things. It's just blowing I grew my up mind. With Stephen King. I love Stephen yeah. King growing up. I was obsessed with him. I watched everything he put out and I never watched Salem's Lot. And I, I've seen almost all Toby Hooper's horror movies. I you know, you, know you, you think it. too, like, you know, just with, you know, the vampire and this being so oh, yeah. kind of iconic. And it's a seventies film, which is and, like and 79 is a great year. And on top of TV that, TV movie. Like, when i was watching it i saw the cast and i was like how come i haven't seen this because it's character actor heaven like everybody's in this kenneth mcmillan fucking elijah cook jr jeffrey lewis i was like dude this cast is fred willard amazing fred willard reggie nader fucking james mason dude uh the lady the bonnie but whatever the fuck her name is everybody's in everybody uh, fucking george george dezuka i i'll be honest man every time i watch salem's lot i can't take david soul like serious because i i just see him as fucking hutch from starsky and hutch from the tv series well the funny it's thing so- is like it's weird like all the character actors I, i'm not trying to be rude he's not a bad actor he's just the least interesting to me he's just a, to he was a tv that. actor at the time and it made sense to hire him on to like yeah a TV yeah, yeah. but everyone else stuff. is like these established like fucking a-list like character actors or, or like celebrity like james mason and fucking like I mean, as Kenneth McMillan was a character actor, but that dude killed it in every movie he was ever in. He's in fucking, he's the Baron in goddamn Dune. Yeah, I know. Baron Harkonnen. Fucking awesome, man. He's the best. He's my favorite actor in the movie. His performance. Got a very young Bonnie Bedelia is in the film. Probably mostly known for uh, Die Hard. Everybody knows her from Die Hard. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Um, wife. The wife, yeah, Bruce Willis's wife in the film, but yeah, David Soul. Like, I just, it, <laughs> I, I, think, I think it's because I used to watch the the syndication of Starsky and Hutch back in the day, and I remember watching this film for the first time. I'm like, that's fuck, that's the dude from Starsky and Hutch. And every time I watch it, that's all I think of. Fuck, it's Dude, so this movie is so influential. Like, I, I watching it, I was like, man, everybody ripped this fucking movie off. Like, yeah. there's a scene that Fright Night lifted verbatim with the with the the ghoul walking down the stairs, the the helper. I was like. This scene is directly lifted from Fright Night. Just ripped this whole scene out, dude. Silent Night, Deadly Night. I feel like ripped off this movie too. I do the, too. The, the impaling of <laughs> uh, of Leanna Quigley. And how many times have we seen the the vampire children flying outside the window? Yeah, and that shit is creepy as fuck. Like the effects, even from nineteen seventy nine, they totally capture those scenes. Like it's like supposed to be kind of dreamlike, but it's very atmospheric. But it's like really happening, and you're like, it's creepy looking, man. It, it, they did. That's a good one job of the that. scariest movie moments ever. In my opinion i think personally man like the it reminds uh, me of night of the devils uh the 1971 <laughs> italian horror film where or the vertilock when black yeah. uh sabbath where they they come to the door and try to convince you to come yeah. out with your family it's exactly right. that that's horrifying like that's ex- hey come out it's me it's grandpa and you're like you've been missing for four days but i'm fine now come out and then you go outside and you're fucking a vampire too right. and you come back the next day and get your dad and then you get your mom and then like this movie has a lot going for it. Like you said, like, you know, it's got so many great character actors, so many faces. Like, it's just, it's awesome to see, um, you know, it's I got love a great the town, dude. Like it's I, got small town. I'm actually lived interested in. in everything that's going on. Like, like yeah, the agreed. dude and his wife. And then the- that part, that seems so great. That's, just- <laughs> I think that they shot this. Well, I think it's shot in California, actually, to be honest, and like some small areas and stuff. It kind of looks like it a little bit. I think I, I read agree. a long time ago, like the house, they actually built that. And it always reminded me, like watching this movie growing up and stuff. I was like, I love Psycho. I've seen Psycho so many times. It always reminded me of the Psycho house, even yeah, though it, it doesn't does look a little bit. It just it looks a little bit like it with like the, the yeah. one 
like roof. Sections. I honestly, I honestly think that's what the influence was because they kind of build it up on a hill a little bit in the way they shoot it from the ground up and they, they kind of make it look bigger than it is and shit. And, um, you know, if you look at some of the trivia and stuff, I think I read it last time I watched this last summer or whatever. And it said something on the lines, they spent like a hundred and something thousand dollars building this, that house for this. So it was like yeah. actually built on a set and it's not even yep. a real house and shit like That's that. Strange. So I was like, and like they, yeah, created it was, a, it. It, it was, and they actually built like the interiors too. Yeah, like they created that whole thing, and I'm like, holy fuck, that's really cool. You but know, they what's sh- weird about. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. It's all good. I, I, no, you were gonna say what was weird. Oh, um, no, it just no. I was gonna say that it, you know it's shot in California, but it's funny because there is a couple scenes where they try to they try to frame it properly where they're not catching the mountains and stuff because it's supposed yeah. to be set in Maine, right? Which is you know <laughs> generally pretty flat and shit. So, but if there there is one scene where they shoot down the small lane in the in the in the small little town, and you can see the mountains in the background. That's like, you know, it's just little gripes like that where I know that's California, right? So, yeah. The, the movie moment. has a really, like, desolate feel. Like, it, it's kind of like I would compare it to Messiah of Evil where, like, before you realize, like, there's this, like, plague on the town, it's kind of too late. Like, everybody's gone. There's nobody around. Yeah, dude. And the thing about the house is it's very Stephen King because they, mm-hmm. they, I never read the story, but they're talking about how can an evil house attract evil men? I'm like, that's such a Stephen King idea. That's the shining, the overlook hotel, all that yep. kind of shit. And they say, basically the house was evil and it attracts evil. So that's why the fucking vampires came there in the first. I know. Place. And, and that's what cool I love stuff. about it too, because in a normal <sighs> movie or like, you know, in something else, yeah. you might not say that. And then you're like, Oh, so just well, so happens that this that, fucking vampire moves in here. Like right when the dude, you know what I mean? That's but the like, one when you throw in that line, it actually helps the narrative. Yeah. That's, that's the, one thing about the narrative that i've always found super compelling and i find it to be the most compelling thing about the movie is the idea of the house attracting evil men and creating like this this house is like the embodiment of evil and it's making people do crazy shit like they go into the the back the the history of the house and like the the guy that built the house in the narrative you know kills his wife and his kid and you know kills himself and then there's another tragedy and stuff and it's and then that's where the writer Ben is like, yo, um, I'm really interested in this house. It's got this, this back history. Does it attract or d- it, is the house evil and it's making, it's almost possessing people I don't think to do it's, evil I don't shit. think it's a situation where it's making it. I think it's just attracting it. So, but do you think the house is built on something or do you think it's how he built it? Like, what was that movie that um, Darren Lynn Bowsman made? Was it the abattoir or whatever? Or was the house made of evil of where murder was committed? But if you look at something like Whole House from Night of the Demons, the house was built on a horrible ancient Indian burial ground or Native American yeah. burial ground, same as poltergeist. Yeah, they don't go they, into that. They move the gravestones, they move the bodies, so it created yeah. it haunted. Why is the house haunted? I don't know if they go in that in the story, but you feel like it's no. just the original person made the house and bad shit happened into it. You know what I mean? Like maybe the person that built it in the house just did something horrible but, on the land. You know, well, what I mean? but they, like they could stayed. it be an artifact in the house? Like, what's that silly movie horror at like thirty seven thousand feet or something? Where like they're taking some artifact to the place and it's haunted, so that fucking the whole plane gets <laughs> fucked up. It's an old movie, so it is an interesting. Yeah, 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 right. Amity, so, flight, flight, Amityville, Amityville toaster. <laughs> yeah, I, it doesn't go into it the fact that like this that this house is built on like a Indian burial ground or some evil shit happened there before. It's kind of like I don't know. It's just like inherently there and it's somehow it's very Stephen King right it's attracting so basically like it even says like in this write-up I, I know this is Wikipedia too and I just thought this was kind of interesting because I never really got the implication or the implied meaning behind when they're talking about the original owner and stuff and the same implied to have been a child molester committed suicide there you know after he killed his his whole family they did and apply stuff. To being a child molester yeah yeah maybe yeah. they do so so that would imply that the dude was already evil and this evil place is you know it's really just you know it's attracting it's almost but what it's doing it's possessing you to become even more eviler and stuff and i think more evil or more evil because i think that kind of plays into the antique dealer though too because he's an interesting character because he's not a vampire that's but he's that's, strong he's, he's, he has um, powers though but that's he's where the narrative what's that's the where the dude's name fucking that, that's Dragon. where the dude he's like the guy in fright oh, Str- straker like no, Richard no, no. Straker. The fucking movie, dra- the, the new movie Redfield. coming out. With- 
Renfield. Oh, Renfield. Yeah, Renfield. He's like a yeah, Renfield. Yeah. He's exactly. But Renfield. no, but but Renfield's not super strong. He's just crazy. He's well, that's like what's in this new movie. Well, so that's what I he? find so fascinating about the narrative and and the evil, like the how the house possesses and attracts his evil people. So he attracts them to this house. That's why Straker goes this because he maybe he's attracted to there. But the house almost. It almost it almost possesses him to the point because there's a there's a great scene in the end of the film where Silent Night Deadline I totally ripped this off where he picks up the doctor literally he's got like inhuman strength there. remember he's not a vampire. oh that's he's Ed normal- Flanders Ed Flanders from Ninth Configuration and Exorcist right. Three great actor right. great actor so he picks this dude up uh, and he literally Flanders? like just impales Ed. him Oakley. he impales him onto these antlers and I'm like oh shit he's got like inhuman but I, I'm thinking that's the possessiveness in I, I don't think it was the house he is more powerful because he kills the dog in the beginning too it has to be him because Barlow yeah because not there dude's yet. in the fucking in the fucking crazy but, no, but, I, but it I'm shows saying, you that there's more than just vampires in this world somehow he has a power because he's evil but like but similar you, to uh bill uh, what was the fucking guy in uh Fright but you don't Night? think it has anything to do with the house maybe no. gave him that extra little fucking I think, I think he, was, he had powers before I think what he was saying it's, about the house just attracts the the, the house yeah, is evil attracts, and attracts the evil. So but, but I don't think there's actually that, the house is doing anything. No, I, I don't think they're giving him powers. I think they just has an attraction to bring them there. It's funny because I always looked at it like he was a dude that obviously was a little bit different. Like maybe he he is kind of an evil guy or whatever. The house attracts him there. But I felt like the house was giving him like this little fucking bumpity bump and like, like maybe. You know, there's no real what, way to know, right? Well, uh, that's what I I'm guess saying. We'd have to read Salem's Law and see if that's that's there. what I'm saying. Like, I always kind of took it as because, you know, Ben asked this crazy question in the beginning of the film. He's like, he's like, if the so house is I, attracting yeah. evil people, he's like, why am I attracted to? This? There's this great scene where he's looking at the house and he's literally like, he's sweating and he's it's so attracted to it that he, it's almost magnetic. It's almost like this weird, like sci-fi magneticism. Yeah element to where he can't get away from it, and then he has and to you, almost snap out of it it's like the you know house is pulling him in but he's like but i'm not evil why would i be attracted to this house you and know what's it, funny to me moods yeah. you're bringing that up how he talks about the story of going back to the house right yeah and he saw the evil thing in the house right yeah is that not exactly what happened to stan and it yeah when yeah. he saw he went to the house and he saw the evil yeah thing no in i there. think there's a lot of parallels with with Dave. sorry moods it was just i wanted to get that out because there's no, 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 so that's many a good things point. that are connecting and then that there's is- another weird point is they're antique dealers and what the fuck does uh, the devil open up a shop in Maine? Needful, in needful things. things. Needful things. Yeah, it's the same fucking thing, right? No, yeah, and yeah. I have that written down in my notes. I said it's crazy the contrast in this movie to so many other. Like Stephen King lives in this world. He lives in like this Castle Rock fantasy world. Even though this isn't Castle Rock, I think Needful Things is actually set in Castle Rock, isn't it though? And but like he yeah, always has right. these things. He always has movies about writers, and he always like these psychological, like these psychosis and and like embodiments of evil and and, and devils and fucking. Um, you know, and he always has these certain elements in his films that, and if you look at the grand scheme of things, there, there's like the Stephen King world that exists where you can start to connect dots and everything does yeah. kind of work on certain levels. And you it's can share universe, Salem's lot sure. to need, needful things that came out so many years. Yeah. It's a shared universe, which I love the fact. And I, that's what I always mean. Me and JP have talked about this many times over the years that like when Stephen King stopped setting his books in the fictional city of Castle Rock and stuff, it, it became different. It's like he wanted to try something else and kind of branch out and do something else. But if you look at the Castle Rock stories, man, there's so many a's and b everything kind of connects and stuff it's really interesting but you could probably just you know br- that's a whole show in itself <laughs> imagine right pretty crazy so th- this was what like this only the second stephen king adaptation yeah carrie oh, would have been first. was 76 yeah carrie was no first. there's got to be another one right carrie 76 no. this is 79 oh. then shining Sh- yeah but shining was after this 80 no i'm just i'm going in order you got yeah. carrie salem's lot shining what fucking great movies, man! Yeah, the the original ones were all like the adaptations. And you got Cujo, and Cujo. Dead Zone. Dead yeah. Zone. Um, what one wasn't there? One in eighty. Uh, I mean the creep. I mean you could put creep. Just don't really adaptation, but Stephen King. Creep show. Creep shows. Yeah, we got creep show. Then Children of the Corn's eighty four. That one started stinking the joint up. No, no, no offense, it did JP. not. Yeah, in comparison to those other movies, it's stinking the, the stinking the place up. <laughs> yeah in comparison to those well yeah, those are all fucking yeah it started getting stinky yeah when did brian de palma though he did his first and then we have yeah and like so many good directors oh christine was 83 too yeah lots of lots of them in the early three 80s, and 83 yeah creep show that's 82 that's, that's 82. really interesting cat's eye and silver bullet 85 he 85. had a good run man and then 
what else? I mean, yeah, like it didn't start getting real stinky until like Tommy Knockers is up in here, like, hey guys. <laughs> well, the '90s TV adaptation, yeah, it's when it started getting a little bit cheaper. Big Garrett's coming in here, being like, <laughs> the 2000s was the worst. Hey, Tommy Knockers, hold my beer. Was that other one? He did Quicksilver Highway and stuff. Like it was based on. Oh, Stephen that King. was a rough one. That's two movies, rough. like two short movies. Oh my god! One's written so... by Clive Barker and one's written by Stephen King. Yeah, but I'm it's... pretty sure they're written by a turd. They're so, bad. Um, they're just like to, legitimately bad. Yeah. Just to answer your question earlier at the beginning of the review, um, there were actually four different versions of this uh, film. Okay. So um, there's a 200 minute version that um, had the commercials that, that they count with the commercials and stuff like that. And the then twenty, which would be um, three twenty. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And then the there's another longer version that has a mm. uh, preview of the next thing you know the second episode and at the beginning of the second episode a recap of the first episode and also the first episode has credits so that's why some oh, okay. versions are, are listed as longer because you have those credits in the first half and a preview of the second half and then the second half has a preview uh, uh what, what happened kind of like the it mini series the it yeah. mini series did that too yeah it there's just a long and then there, there is a credits. theatrical version as well uh, which it's is like what, 112 two hours? minutes, 112 oh, hour, hour and four it, or 52. It, it, it's just under eight, eight minutes, under two hours. Holy shit. That's quite a big difference compared to this. Cause this is yeah. three Oh three running time straight up. Um, but I would be, I, see to me, dude, I don't think this movie drags really. No, like, the I first like part went by so fast for me it, because it's interesting, right? Because you're interested in, you know, like, this in in richard straker and and like when that vampire is going to show up but it's the house and it's like the kid and to us like the kid is interesting to me because he's us he's like the embodiment right, yeah, of yeah. us like he's a and this has got to be one of the first times i've ever seen the monster kid yeah it predates deadly spawn it predates uh creep yeah. show monster squad it predates monster squad it predates <laughs> neon maniacs those are all monster kid movies the one thing about this movie i've always thought was really funny is like you know for a three-hour movie you generally would have you know some slower moments and like you Friday know maybe some, maybe some developments and stuff that aren't like really you know overly that interesting stuff <laughs> you know like the crazy thing with ben and um the susan's character like they are dating within four and a half minutes of this movie <laughs> it's so quickly done like, i know i almost thought to the town. I, at first i was like i couldn't remember because it's been a while since i watched this at first i was like was this like his his um like you know teenage sweetheart from back in the day that he's yeah. rekindling but he was like 11 when he moved or something yeah and like, in the movie and like she <laughs> just happens to be reading his book and you know it's just one of those things but it really does clip man you get right into it like he's at the house and he's trying to find a place to rent and he's dating this girl within the first 10 minutes it's the craziest thing and then like i and said honestly I, he's kind of a little bit of a dick about it too like whenever whenever ned shows up or whatever he's just like kind of standing there like yeah i'm with this chick now yeah <laughs> well that right. ned guy's a prick he's clearly an idiot well yeah i mean but he's like, let's open it let's he open it it's like no leave it fucking that. closed brah i still closed, think bro. toby hooper for how his how mellow and you know kind of an oddball dude he really was i think he made you know there there's a part in this movie that legitimately i know he was laughing inside because you kind of forget about the ex-boyfriend for a little bit and then oh, when, when ben goes, goes into in that room, bedroom and he gets fucking he, clocked, he I fucking swear, flies out of the closet bro but, but, it's, but we've been away from this whole scenario for so long in the movie and then all of a sudden he just does this it comes out of left field quite obviously out of left field but it's like you know toby hooper was laughing when he's like i'm gonna catch everyone off guard and i will credit man that shit is a little bit unnerving because you're like, holy fuck, like where the hell did that come from? But I've said before, I think one of the best jump scares of all time is in Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 when Leatherface busts through the wall with the chainsaw. This movie actually has a couple really good jump scares also. And like there's the bro's good at scaring people, man. He oh, was dude. legit though. Like, you know me with jump scares. I always criticize the shit of them, but if when they're done properly, they're effective. Like there's the one where um basically uh Barlow, yeah, he kills uh who is it? Um it would have been uh shit the kids parents no, yeah, well, the kids parent that's the best entrance of all he time. fucking three stooges those bitches no um fucking put knocks the, their heads together the comedian uh fred willer's character when he comes running yeah, outside yeah. there and all of a sudden the hand jumps up right in front of the that camera and shit that's a good jump scare man and like that's how you do them there's a couple different ones in this where he really executes quite well i wouldn't say that the punch is really a jump scare but it does kind of catch you off guard literally <laughs> i think it's the like scariest out of left scene. field the scariest scene in the movie 
besides, you know, like the typical ones that everybody brings up is at the end when the kids in the, in the foreground and the doors open and you, he doesn't see it, but you see all the other vampires like Jeffrey Lewis and like two or three more vampires with their eyes glowing, crawling towards him. Yeah. Dude, those like, eye fucking those look. That, eye glowing scary. stuff, dude, scary is actually as fuck, man. extremely well done. And, and everybody looks the vampires, how it like spreads. How like they don't know their vampire yet, and they're just like getting sick. It's very yeah. classical Bram yeah. Stoker's Dracula. Dude, it is. No, the it movie is. The scene where they walk a great where mixture dude, of like where dude classic walks into and new. The, um, yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. Where he goes into the room and the dude's just sitting in the fucking chair, bro, and his eyes are glowing, and he looks like fucking looks like a fucking. It's Jeffrey zombie. Lewis, isn't it? It totally is. It's like classic that's Jeffrey Lewis scene, right? Is that they, that's who you're talking about, right? Where I don't know. Like, the dude, yeah, it's Jeffrey. Yeah, Jeff- Jeffrey Lewis is him from Devil's Rejects. Say See, Jeffrey again. Lewis, most people Van recognize Joe him because he's always bald and everything. He has hair in this movie. Yeah. It's like the weirdest thing, right? <laughs> but uh, um, no, like that's I Julian even Lewis's like father. Nosferatu, that's Julian the, Lewis's father. Yeah. Really, the yeah, the Nosferatu yeah. style vampire, like you, you just didn't see. You don't really even see it still, but like that was Toby Hooper's decision. Really? Yeah, it's it's totally that wasn't by in the book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because so I know he improved that, it. Um, Romero pulled out of this because um, the uh, the Nosferatu um, redo thing was coming out. Yeah. They said there was two vampire movies like at the time, and they wanted to make this a mini series instead. They had the Nosferatu, and then they had the uh, the Dracula with Frank Langella. Yeah, right. Both are right. great movies, though. Both are really good movies. Really good, man. This like, one is too. Kinski, All three Kinski is really so good. good. Kinski, yeah, he's really good in the fucking. Yeah. I mean, yeah, when yeah. you're an actual Not serial killer, you can play Dracula or a vampire pretty well, <laughs> right. <laughs> right, dude? And right. like th- this one, man, I-, I just love the look of the, the the like the blue like tint to his skin and stuff like that, man. It's creepy. And they couldn't have got a creepier guy in real life to play him. He's fucking albino in Mark of the Devil. You know yeah. the look of the look of Barlow in this film is so he's so amazingly made up. Like, I wish you get Scary. to see him a little bit more because right. like, you really don't get to see a lot of him. And well, I like big, the build up to him. I like the no, build up. The to build up is crazy, yeah, but his entrance is, is classic, man, because the whole house is like an earthquake it's shaking and shit. And everyone's like, what the fuck? And all of a sudden he just appears and they, he literally pulls some WWE shit out of his fucking <laughs> and just like, Oh, dude, that part's so amazing. It, it's it's like the greatest Dracula entrance of all time. But but that's what kind of leads me into like the end of the movie, like how they basically, you know, defeat Barlow is I think it's really weak. I think it's the weakest part of the movie, man, because it, it just happens so easy. There's no fight. They just stake him, right? They literally there's no fight. Like he's literally in, it's like it's like like the classic Dracula story where, oh, we've got the coffin. He's in his lair open it up and stake them like it's like that you know it's like the whole um it's kind of like the martin thing right you know it, but it's very throwback because that's motherfucking. It, that's what it i'm saying like yeah. they always just die really easy in, in the, all the old movies yeah they plaster them and then you know effects are kind of cool but I, I always thought like man you know to see a little bit more of a battle with that great looking bluish gray fucking just ugly fucking well, they vampires said they cool. had to ha- help reggie nolder walk around a lot because with that makeup and shit he could not fucking see and he was old right well. like he was super old <laughs> i don't know Dude. if he's that old it's just i mean that makeup was pretty rough on him i mean because reggie nolder he's in that dead men don't die he's in bird with the crystal plumage he's in mark of the devil i'll have to check when reggie nolder died and how old he was at that uh, time. he died I mean, in 91 at 84 so in 79 15 years later he would have been 69 so he wouldn't have been uh, too bro, he wouldn't have been too old like pretty 60- old that's 69. pretty that, that's pretty old to be doing stunts i yeah. guess it's old if you're like you know yeah if you're having taken care of yourself and shit but yeah I, and he never looked young and his he didn't he no. looked like fucking shit 1970 yeah be, no. being 69 now they're always like 79 old. is way different than being 69 now. yeah like jeffrey lewis well, to me, he let, always let looked old to me too. <laughs> let me put this you know kenneth mcmillan the guy who plays the constable yeah. the sheriff yeah he's 46 in this movie how old do you think he was <laughs> he was only 46 there yeah he died actually a couple years after this movie didn't he he died in 89 oh so yeah he died 10 years later yeah he died in 56 56. not that's not very old and that dude was in everything yeah Yeah. he was in everything man he's just one of those guys you recognize right this whole movie is full of one of those guys yeah Yeah. Uh, another thing that i read here is that the theatrical version might actually be worth checking out one day because apparently they used alternate um they use a gorsi violent takes from the they film? uh there's a gore scene i listened to some of the commentary and toby hooper said during that scene with uh george uh D- i can never say his name right the guy from the deer hunter the fat guy who, who catches his wife cheating yeah. yeah 
that guy, they actually basically make it seem like he shoots Fred Willard in the director's cut. They shot pickups to have him get shot. Oh, really? He well, shoots but, him but, in the fucking face. But I just, but I just talked. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. They part, put yeah, the yeah. shotgun actually in his mouth in the alternate. Oh, crazy. Yeah. Yeah, and they shoot him because they wanted to shorten it up. It's, yeah, well, it's weird. Even even at the three hour mark, there's still characters you never really find out what happens. You got to assume they got turned to vampires or killed. Mm-hmm. Elijah Cook Jr., uh, Jor- uh, the Jor- uh, big guy and his wife. You don't know whatever happened to any of them. Yeah, like oh, boom, boom, Bonnie. Yeah, they all die. I assume it. Well, they they totally die. I mean, everybody I mean, dies. You get the to see what happens. Dead. The whole well burns or... down. Yeah, and the whole place burns down afterwards. W- would that- you guys consider this movie slow? No. no. Me neither, no. because I think sometimes people confuse slow and long, or like use them synonymously. But they're not. I don't think Doctor Sleep I, is slow, and that's a I long. I think it's. Movie I think too. it's actually very well conceived because in the first half of the movie, obviously, you have the subplot uh, with you know the um, the truck driver and his and his uh, horror wife. You've got they spent a lot of time. Wait, what they call her? Uh, boom, boom, Bonnie. Uh, boom, boom, Bonnie. <laughs> you got a lot of characters going on here that like keep you occupied. You know what but I mean? It's funny. Like you spend a lot of time with them. Yeah, so yeah, but it, they it really to connect with the town, like the the, the whole, especially whenever everyone starts turning it and stuff. Well, I find it, it like, really makes it feel more impactful because you yeah, know all these people. I agree. I agree. Even though you don't really get, you're right though. You don't really get to. You have to kind of almost improvise and just kind of assume that you know these certain characters have probably died in turn well, and stuff like I that. Some like people that, took though. off, but everybody is yeah. interconnected at one point because they spend so much time with you know the whole cheating wife angle and stuff like that but then it leads into that great scene with fred willard running the house and then barlow's I, the first yeah. time you get to see the hand and then they get him and then they show him in the car and that's kind of a creepy scene right there too he's kind of like all slumped over I'm like what the fuck is going on here right and, that, and that's Strange. pretty cool so like the, all those all those kind of subplots and everything kind of interconnects itself and then you kind of you, you know you you put the rest together and stuff i think it's pretty much implied what the fuck is going on there so i, I love that the sheriff just dips I love his family sitting in the car waiting. <laughs> and he's like, here, you know how to use this? Here, take this. And he yeah. just leaves. And his interactions with uh, uh, James Mason is great. He's like, ciao. He's like, ciao. He's like, it's bye for Italian. And then later he says it again. He's like, ciao. He's like, yeah. He's like, it's ciao. He's like, I know. <laughs> like, that's, <laughs> that's fucking great. I think I read somewhere that, where the fuck did I read this? I can't remember if it was. It was, I think the last time I watched this, I was reading trivia or whatever, and it, it had something to do with Larry Cohen. Larry Cohen had actually. He was going to direct this. But he Thank had God a he did, because we saw what yeah, he Yeah, he actually did a script. Uh, he yeah, tried he, to adapt the script with it, because it was 400 and some pages. And apparently they said it was the worst script they'd ever seen in their lives. So then he got detached from doing this movie, <laughs> it, which is ha- half ironic. of this script is just Michael Moriarty talking to the camera. What is this? But it's like, but then he <laughs> ends up doing an unrelated sequel. He writes a fucking C. He I actually had to go in there and to see if he actually wrote the screen. He wrote that fucking movie, man. I well, thought he maybe just got hired on to direct. On. I'm sequel. glad he didn't do this one. I said Ooh. that we got lucky. Hooper did it. And it's yeah. so crazy because honestly, Larry Cohn is a great writer. He's wrote a real, he's lot, he's wrote a lot of really great movies. Like bone is an excellent movie. Yeah. I mean, um, Cohen's great. I don't know what happened. Yeah. And like, he always full of salt scrap, but this like, honestly, his sequel, I don't know what in the fuck, like, it, it's just the weirdest thing ever, but we'll get into that. But anyways, I just wanted um, to bring up the Larry Cohen thing. Cause th- I thought it was kind of funny that they said it was the worst script they'd ever seen. In their lives. <laughs> I think between this and life force and invaders from Mars, it's probably like the most, visual um i guess thing that you could uh attach hooper to poltergeist for the directing thing like i i feel like these are much more this similar. is one of his better paced movies though too Th- this, is this is much is more similar movie. looking I know. to that than than eaten alive how often can we say i think Kobe hooper with good pacing look- and then movies three hours long. Like this is an accomplishment no shit, in, in right? itself, it, right? I mean this is as much as I like Life Force, the long version it's, it's pacing's so long. a little off. It's the pacing's so rough. And I yeah. love Life Force, and the pacing's not great. <laughs> no, Innovators I mean, from Mars, arguably, the pacing is not great. This yeah. is arguably Hooper's greatest directing, uh, you know, showcase. Yeah, I mean, in I terms mean, of filmmaking, I would say that, yeah, I this one's know. a little... got Poltergeist, too. I in mean, terms if, of scale, if we're counting Poltergeist, then yes, but like... In, uh, in Texas Chainsaw. I mean, Texas Chainsaw, is, it's more experiment. It's done di- a lot differently. It's hard. Yeah, I mean that's kind of like it. it's hard to compare it. I agree. This is this feels this and Poltergeist feel like big, big Hollywood movies, right? Yeah. yeah, where he had like to deal with producers and stuff, and he still turned out. Don't you find it kind of ironic a little bit though? Like Toby Hooper adapts 
Salem's Lot into a TV miniseries, and Larry Cohen's sequel feels more like a fucking TV movie than this one does. I know this movie feels That's very so big. weird. And that well, motherfucking shit, dude, movie, you got it, like a lot of times, like like this was a like miniseries were treated with like such care. Dude. Oh yeah, yeah, it was like a big thing. And, and what? Cohen's movie actually went to theaters for short yeah. theater. Can you so imagine this, seeing but... fucking Return to Salem's Lot in a theater? You'd be like, what the fuck? <laughs> this is actually one of the only um like one of the only sequels ever to get a theatrical version that was a sequel to a tv film yeah like, is there th- another about, example of name, that? Me, name me another one and name, name me a tv movie that got a sequel that went straight to fuck or that actually went to how how, how would we rank cooper's movies we could do like a top six like i mean Texas this Chains to me one is, right this to me is yeah. his second best film if, if, i don't either I that or I, poltergeist i have compiled I, my top seven and like that's where i get and i think i had salem's lot at number two or th- i can't remember if i had poltergeist i can't remember a way I did it, but th- those think, are all really good i think poltergeist like if we're oh, doing no, best or of- favorite are we doing best or favorite because my I number do. favorite it's texas chainsaw and then either texas chainsaw two or eaten alive either or eaten and alive then probably the one. salem's lot is four then poltergeist is five and then we'll probably do Life Force at six, Fawn House at seven. I think those are his seven best. Am I wrong? Yeah, spontaneous combustion. I don't even like. Although <laughs> that's a piece of shit. I like Invaders from Mars to be my number eight. Where's Fun House? Uh, seven. Yeah. Eh, fun- if I rewatch Fun House, it might be better than Inva- Life Force. It's been a long time since I watched Fun House. I like Fun House more than uh, Life Force. I would actually have to go back and just like spend time. Because I, I obviously have seen all these movies, but to maybe just watch them all kind of in sequence and just kind of put the pieces together, see how I how I enjoy them and where they place in. But I, I know, like every time I watch Eaten Alive, I just I want to rewatch. I love that movie. I yeah, no, I, I love Eaten Alive too. Um, it, it I, I mean, I can make a rough top ten. You know what I mean? If we're throwing in and number nine's the Mangler. I was just going to so say the Mangler even in the Wait, top number, ten. Number so, nine so, is Body Bags. Number nine is Body Bags, and number ten is the Mangler. There we go. <laughs> Yeah, actually, yeah. Uh, that's. I always have a now, hard time. Now for me, number ten would probably be Crocodile. I haven't watched I have, that in years. I have a hard time with putting anthologies in when you only do like one segment. There's like three segments. It's kind of brutal. But I can't. I can't be putting in spontaneous combustion. That's a. That's not a good movie at all. You know no, what? Here, do not here it is. It it's uh, it the sucks. pilot for uh, Freddy's Nightmares. Come on. Oh yeah, yeah. That's well, actually, don't you like actually, the Toolbox Murders? Isn't the remake of the Toolbox Murders ain't that bad? Is it? It's okay. No, it's bad. We, we actually, I actually reviewed that like years mortuary ago. a little bit too but I, I oh mean, mortuary is like really movie. bad really bad cg in that shit too so Ugh. you got chainsaw eaten alive salem's Chains- lost funhouse poltergeist life force chainsaw Wars, two bro Wars, chainsaw two no i'm just counting that's eight right oh. there you have you have a nine body bags of actual and ten mango i like the mangler i know you guys are bad about it but i like it <laughs> no no no. i like the mangler too <laughs> it's toby hooper stupid, seems to have i like it he has this thing with me where i really like half of his movies like like half of a movie. I like, hate Dance of the Dead or whatever that oh, was before. I thought yeah, that was that was awful. one of the worst it's I've the, ever seen. It's actually one of the I think it was one of the worst rated ones we did in both seasons was that I know I I was like, what is this? Is this for real? Yeah, like I it, like the first half of the fun house a lot more in the second half. And I like the first half of TCM two more in the second half too. It's weird. It's just how I, I always all perceive the movies, man. I, I think Invaders from Mars, as much as I like it, it runs out of steam. It does. I like and I, I and I like Life Force, and you guys don't like that one. Do you like the original one better? <laughs> I never saw the original one from fifty one. Yeah. No, I've been meaning to see it, but it finally got a new release, a nice release, but it's an import. It's too expensive. I'll wait for a stateside. Yeah, that would be a kind of a fun show, like just to do. We haven't done like an OG yeah. verse remake forever, and that just kind of sticks out. That'd be a cool one. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's it's fun. It's fun fun but yeah i think that the pace in that movie is a little bit off what, what the, is i'm remake. dangerous tonight oh that's that uh one about the dress the killer dress with uh, anthony perkins never saw it yeah i actually it got arlie ermy in it i'm pretty sure it, I it up looks a copy pretty decent Kino, that's right? probably a good number 10 yeah yeah that's probably in number 10 yeah i haven't watched it yet Lee i actually Wallace i think i have a copy of it i haven't watched it yet I know it's not going to be in my top 10 is that Night Terrors movie. I turned that off. Oh, dude, Night Terrors. Actually, I have the VHS. <laughs> I have Never a DVD it. import. I might have had a VHS. That movie was rough. I don't even remember it. Robert Englund playing Marquise de Sade, you think would be. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That one. <laughs> yeah, and, my, and there my, was actually another one that he did, too, called The Apartment Complex. 
I don't know what that is. Yeah, I'm not sure. Ninety-nine made for television mystery thriller film. Right, never it's heard of it. It's an apartment film. I bet it's as good as Roman Polanski's trilogy. <laughs> huh. uh, and there's never f- been a movie. There's not one movie from actually I, as good as a Roman Polanski movie, probably. <laughs> so uh, it's kind of interesting though that there's like two to- Toby Hooper films that like nobody's ever talked about that I've ever. I heard. know the Dangerous Tonight one's been talked about. I've heard about it. For yeah, years. it's, it's Perkins. It. It's later. But actually, the uh, Freddy's Nightmares pilot is actually like pretty solid. It is. It's actually really good. But yeah. but there's not that many. I bet does Stuart Gordon have ten good movies? No. Yeah. Really? Reanimator from Beyond. Um Dolls. I think, Dolls. I, think I did a talk. Castle Freak. Story. Pit and a Pendulum. King of the Ants That's is good. Five. King of the Ants is six. King Robot of Robot Jocks, is, I don't remember. Decent. It's good. It's good. King of it's, Ants is I'd say it's it's like a seven. It's it's still pretty solid, I guess. But um are we counting as masters of horrors because fortress fortress is great dude fortress, oh, fortress is, is a good one yeah day gone are we counting as non-horror because like Stuck. edmund's a great movie too yeah edmund's i picked great. that one up for the he series definitely like has 10 good movies. totally neglecting yeah. but i don't know if he has 10 good horror movies though <laughs> what about yeah. what's a uh, daughter of darkness made for tv that gordon yeah 1990 never seen it oh that was like his He's also tv adaptation of was that like a remake of Daughter of Darkness? I was wondering if it was or not. Because, yeah, I mean. We Anthony know Perkins in that one, too. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Crazy. Perkins getting all these cheap TV movies. Perkins worked with so many directors we didn't even know. I know. Man, you know what's a funny part in Salem's Lot? And I, this, like, I was just thinking about this right now. Is the scene where. <clears throat> so the mom, uh, I guess, uh, whatever her mom's name is in the film. So they're at the house and when they're having the dinner and stuff, they go into the kitchen and she's like, yeah, so what's this new book about? And she's like, yeah, you know, it's about a couple guys. And she's like, oh, it's about that. It's one of those. It's one, or no, she's like, it's yeah, not it's one, one of those, those, is it? <laughs> and she just kind of looks at her and I'm like, oh my God, it's so 70s. <laughs> it's like so bad. Ugh. Oh, shit. Anything and that was like on, on TV was- too, right? That was on TV. That's the funny part about that. Yeah. Anything else on this one? I like um, it. I don't have much to say. Well, I want to go back. I, I want to go back to the ending. I want your guys' thoughts on it because I did state my opinion on the ending. Like, I don't think it's. Horrible. I don't think you're wrong. I, th- I think it's very much typical Dracula, and I bet some of that dealt with. Uh, I, w- I wish I read the book so I know if he dies in like a grandiose way, because I'm wondering if his makeup and his mobility was a problem, so they just like fucking cheated him to cheap death because it's fright night they like because fright night is kind of like this movie a lot to be honest yeah and then fright night they just go big they just go as big as they can well that's what i and feel everything and everything I, see, see this is what I, I i have this noted too and i'm like i feel like i'm criticizing the ending but then i'm forgetting it is a tv film they did spend a lot of money on building this house and and doing all the type of stuff maybe they just it could be the mobility thing too also but it might just be that you know they already lo- th- this movie is already three hours if you have this big huge climax with a lot more special effects and and all this type of stuff it's a lot more cost heavy and maybe they just opted to do more of a classic ending instead of you know spending money that they probably didn't have kind of thing i don't know it just seems like it happens so quick like they find that layer and it's really awesome you know it's super it's just like a universal movie it's dark yeah. and it just it ends so quick like he doesn't even give up a fight they like literally open up the casket and they just like boom done I'm like, Holy well shit. he like, did have the protector he had the protector without the protector that's why he was so strong because he had to yeah. protect him when yeah he and he's also probably like old as fuck too yeah like in va- vampire yeah i mean but yeah i mean striker he how many times does he fucking get shot there like six times before he goes down exactly the same amount that fucking uh billy gets shot or whatever in fright night right that's funny same scene i'm telling you it's the same scene uh, verbatim it's like the same staircase right also um i kind of like the epilogue actually could have been a good territory to take a sequel honestly yeah well you that's know, why i forgot I this movie ends dark too because she comes looking for him all the vampires that survived are coming to look for See, him again with the yeah, cool yeah. ideas like the the holy water bottles that they glow from when, dusk till dawn took that and yeah, demon night you're right and, and the glows went and then they're like oh I shit there's there's a vampire there i don't i, love both I, I can't explain why that happens why that why why it glows to them and how they have that ability where that tech or where that ability came from it doesn't matter but it's a cool idea but it does it ends tragically Demonite. because 
because of who the vampire is at the end and what they have to do and stuff so yeah 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 but i like the idea that like all these fucking vampires are all pissed off now and they're like gonna hunt hunt them down and kill the them. Well, they burned down their home i like it, it depends yeah, yeah. who dies you don't know who they left it open-ended because you don't know which people turn to vampires who died who lived yeah the whole town well, burns down but they, you don't know they, everybody who died yeah they do imply right that the fire spreads into the city and they do imply that it, the whole city burns down that's what pisses me off even more about fucking larry cohen's uh um sequel is that like he sets it in jerusalem like in salem's lot in, in salem and it's like obviously it's a different world but like this whole town i guess it is in theory like eight years later technically if you wanted to put it in the kind of the same world but but it's like this new it's like the city or the small town and like nothing is like like there's nothing doesn't look very no much hit. like new england no and it it's like just goddamn fucking all right, well let, let's shit. get into that one when we get into that one all right, so I, I don't have a whole lot more to say. I think um, I think this movie is is just really well done. Like for a three hour movie, you generally hear the same old moods. Pacing sucked. Cut your fucking shit down. Stop being an indie filmmaker and using all your damn footage. No, it's like the complete polar opposite for myself, man. I think this movie is is really really well done. I love the characters. I love the the subplots are fun um you know the the narrative with uh the house is great there's a lot of really cool atmosphere one of the coolest looking vampires there's so much to offer here man there's a real there's good scare moments um the vampires look awesome i love those beady eyes and shit so much good stuff so much good stuff like honestly one of the best and that would be a fun show too like top 10 tv horror films of all time like fucking bad ronald and salem's there's lots of good there's ones. a that's a hard night hour for me yeah, there's a lot of good TV, especially 70s and early 80s, man. Fuck, we, we've talked about this many times for like the, some of the show, top 10 shows that we've done. We've covered a lot of TV films that we watch and stuff. And it turns out there's a fuck ton of really good ones. It's pretty mm -hmm. interesting. So that would be a fun show. Maybe just to talk about it. Maybe just go through some shit. I don't know. But all in all, man, I'm at a 9 out of 10 on this one. I'm a big fan. And, I, you know, honestly, I watched it just last summer again. And I had no problem watching it again. I, it, it ripped by... It's very enjoyable. It's honestly one of the better vampire movies out there, in my opinion. Yeah, I guess I'll go next. Um, yeah, man, I, I've always been a big fan of this one ever since I've seen it. I actually love the mini series format, whether it's two episodes or three episodes. Um, it, it's something that is like sort of a lost art. They don't really do it much anymore. Um, I guess like the closest recent thing to it would have been um, the Fear Street thing that they did. Yeah, it's Netflix. That's a new TV made for Netflix. So that's the TV horror yeah, films. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, right. Uh, I think this is one of Toby Hooper's best films. And I also, it's one of my favorite vampire flicks, one of my favorite Hooper flicks. Um, I actually... I actually really fuck with this movie heavy and I'm also going to give it a nine out of 10. It's a classic. Yeah, it's good. Dave. Um, I could have watched this for another fucking hour. I first time watched, loved it. There's no, I can't, I don't have any complaints about it. No negatives. Nine out of 10. Yeah. Very good. good Nines stuff. across the board, bro. <laughs> you know, man, we just like You'll love to see it. Raise the shit out of that. And it came up short. <laughs> came up short. yeah well came up short but it, i mean it's definitely a hell of a movie yeah okay all right so that is uh salem's lot from 1979 no better than to be speeding around jerusalem's lot at night oh you mean salem's lot don't ever go to salem's lot don't ever go to salem's lot salem's lot jerry man you're making it worse shut up, will you shut up shut up are you making fun of our town? I said, are you making fun of our town? A return to Salem's Lot, directed by Larry Cohen. Shut up! Just shut the fuck up! All right, so moving into the 80s, 1987s, <laughs> A Return to Salem's Lot, directed by Larry Cohen. Of all fucking people. Now, you guys just heard us tell the story about Larry Cohen, who he had wrote a story. You know, a script for the original one got turned down. Ironically enough, ends up directing a sequel that he penned. I'm pretty sure it was a different. It had to have been a different script. <laughs> he <laughs> but, just redoctored the script. 
<laughs> yeah, maybe it was because it, them saying that 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 his original script was the worst thing they'd ever seen. It could have been this one. It may have been. This <laughs> could you imagine that if it was this one, but they just altered it to right. like, not be the same movie? Okay, so I have stated so many times on the show, I'm a huge, huge Larry Cohen fan. I love Bone. I like his black exploitation, Black Seizure, Hell Up in Harlem. I like Bone's the It's great. Alive movies. I love the stuff. I love so stuff, much stuff. Q, Larry, all great. You know, Larry Cohen's one of those very kind of diverse directors, and I like his style, man. I like his early stuff, where his, you know, especially his black exploitation with Fred Williamson and stuff like those were guerrilla shot. Like this guy was the king of guerrilla shooting. Like the, there's a great story about uh, Q the Queen Serpent, where they were like, like I, I mean, you probably know the story, Dave, where they were shooting on top of the roofs and shit, and all the the shells were hitting the ground down below and stuff. Yeah. He because, would have been in prison the rest of his life if he did that. Totally. Now. 100% in fucking prison. Like, the stories from his gorilla shooting days are nuts. Like, them fighting in the airport and going up the baggage, um, the, the baggage uh, uh, things and stuff and going into behind. You go to fucking jail. Like, your trespass is crazy. Like, there's so many crazy <laughs> he stories. He was a good man. talker, though, too. He'd get away with shit. You know, he'd be like, oh, we they told us we have permission. That guy down there, he just said we could do it. And yeah. then he would just leave. But he was one of those filmmakers that would have minimal money on movies and make them a lot bigger than they probably should have been. He was really good at kind of, you know, elongating the funds that he Getting had for his films. Getting favors, too. And right. I like that he used the same cast and crew all the time, so you get a lot of regulars. But he was smart. He could shoot a film. He could write a film. He came up with good ideas. He always had commentary. He always had something to say. And then we hit 1987. <laughs> <laughs> um a return to salem's lot so again he wrote this movie and directed it and i i just you know I'm, I'm 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 absolutely floored at how bad this movie is like and i love the fact that michael moriarty is back in his films we all know michael moriarty he's in like every cohen fucking movie he's a great i love michael moriarty he's great he's hamming it up in this one big time i think one of the weirdest things about this film is that samuel fuller has a character so as a bizarre. Nazi hunter. And he's in this the film. best part about it. He best is. Part. You know, he directed White Dog. He's a classic director. He's mostly known for directing tons Big of classic Big Red One, movies. White Dog, Shot Corridor. I mean, yeah. White Dog and Big Red One, I'm very familiar with. Great movies. Actually, a little fun fact about Samuel Fuller. So this movie opened up on September 11th, 1987. He died October 30th of that the next month. So he shot this film, and I'm assuming it's because he saw it in the cinema. So he's like, fuck this. Like, I'm done. I'm done living. I can't, I, I can't do this anymore. Oh, and it stars a young Tara Reed, which is probably your best acting she's ever done in her career. She's what, like seven years old in this movie. <laughs> so is who is really? it star? Tara, Tara Reed. Reed. That's from, Tara Reed. Yeah. The young girl. High. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. So yeah. And it's probably the best acting. She's, she's such a bad actress, but I digress. So I return to Salem's lot. Quick little um, synopsis. A man and his son vacation. No. Well, yeah, I guess kind of to a quiet Vancouver vampire populated town of Salem's lot. So basically the story is Michael Moriarty is an anthropologist. He gets a call from his, his ex-wife and their, her new husband, boyfriend, whatever the fuck it is. And they, they've got the, he, they've got the son and he's out of control. He's got some problems and shit. So they want to take, they want to get him back to my mouth potty mouth so they want to take him they need he needs a break from reality you need to go sort some things out so Moriarty's not very happy about this because he's a busy anthropologist slash writer and stuff and slash so, a filmmaker yeah pretty much and uh, yeah so they end up in Salem's lot he inherits a house from his aunt right from his aunt yeah his and aunt they end up in Carla, which is not really his aunt yeah so they end up in Salem's lot and of course right away they they find out that um the the town is not normal everybody in the town is literally vampires right <laughs> except your favorite james dixon who's in yes. a bunch of larry cohen movie and the other cop is actually all holbrook's son dave holbrook and you would recognize him from everybody's favorite slasher girls night out right right good call good call and and i recognized him right away i was like what is that fuck from and i had to look him up i was like oh it's Hal holbrook's kid so yeah so it's set in salem's lot of course it's like not the same world so it looks a lot different and it's this movie is no, it's like a polar opposite version of Salem's Lot. It's completely done tongue in cheek. I didn't all, know it was a comedy at first. I was like, what all is comedy. Wrong with this? It's I didn't know what was going on. I was so, confused. Was well, it, you were you when it came out like 87 too. I mean, that's where you started getting the Freddy effect and everything well, wanted to be like funnier and satirical. Yeah, well, you got Return of Living Dead Part 2, Chud 2, fucking those movies are like just like hey let's not even do the same movie let's just be stupid and i like those movies but let's be honest they're just stupid 
the movie does open up with a really funny line. So Michael Moriarty's character, he plays this character named Joe Weber. He sees his son. He's like, hi, son. How you doing? And the son looks at him and he kind of pauses and he goes, well, you heard them. I'm fucked up. <laughs> oh, I love cool. that this kid is just cussing up a storm. He is so hostile, man. It, it's <laughs> funny because the next scene, they're like driving to the to Salem's lot. He just like sparks up a cigarette and he's like, really? You're just going to smoke? In the <laughs> <laughs> you know what's it's really ridiculous. weird to me? Is the movie opens up like it's a Tales from the Crypt episode where like those they always have those like shitty characters that just like go to some weird place and film a ritual or do something they're not supposed to and get like a curse on them and then like melt. Right. That's all the opening move is. I'm like, what is this? A Tales from the Crypt episode? And then pretty soon we start off with like this weird place. And then we're like in like Salem's lot. And yeah. like the first like 10 minutes of this movie are entertaining and the last 20. But there's like 40 minutes of like bullshit with like we want you to write the vampire bible and it's just like michael moriarty like, wandering this is, around the is this city. really what we're fucking doing a vampire yeah. bible for fucking so, what so this is okay this is what i wanted to talk about so the narrative here is so stupid so they they basically f- tell them that they're vampires and and then they reveal to them what their objectivity is it, you know they want michael moriarty who is an anthropologist to write them this vampire bible and I'm thinking to myself, why the fuck? And it's literally to take the shit mainstream. They're like, yeah, it might take a couple hundred years for people to catch on. But, you know, we want to get this out there. And I'm like, why? Like, it's fucking <laughs> stupid. I it's love literally- when there's a pause. And so he's like, why? But it's so <laughs> fucking dumb. It's like the worst but then- script ever. Don't it's, they have something else? Like, don't they actually have another ultimatum, like all alternative? Like, they're trying to do something. Like, I, I can't remember. It's evil. They want to turn him into a vamp. I don't remember what they're fucking. No, they're, they're, they actually don't. They like they. I don't know if the, the end judge, goal to, it was to like have him write the shit and then. Tr- I, I don't even think so. I don't even. The judge. Don't think yeah, yeah. No, they, I think well, they, he's a vampire. They were looking for him to pa- like the the lead dude wanted to pass on the fucking town to him or some shit. But he that when he's a evil vampire, they keep cutting to like this rubbery vampire in the woods, and I'm like, what is this? What is happening here? Which oddly it looks I, it, it looks like fucking sloth from the Goonies. And it looks. Pretty I just bad. don't know like why you go this route. Like what? Like what is the thought process to go this route? Cheap. So I think one of the goofiest things ever in the script isn't the fact that Moriarty is supposed to write this Bible to like you know make the vampires mainstream. It's like. The stupidest thing about it is that like, so they're classic vampires where they're not, they can't be out in the day, right? They sleep in their coffins during the day. So at nighttime, they do everything at nighttime. They, they have night school, brings a new meeting to night school, right? All the kids are in school and night school and it's totally ridiculous, but they have vampire, well, what they call them clones. They have cloned themselves to have these clone vampires look after the small community during the day. (laughs) It's like fucking stupid part of the narrative oh ever oh my god dude yeah they actually literally... i think i like this movie less now that we're talking yeah. about it. so during the day when you see people walking around which you know moriarty and his kid run into people but those aren't they're the they're the cloned vampires so they're able to be able or to you know to function in the sun and stuff i'm like this is so fucking stupid i, I didn't pick up that stupid. they were clone vampires i just thought they were like people that they just had go yeah. through the town so they could so sleep. they created a technology even... where they could clone themselves and then they were able to function in the sunlight that's why there's people walking around but they're not they're not human it's so I knew th- stupid oh, that's it's so, so stupid. stupid like even the part where he clocks the guy and he's like yeah that's what we're here for you know just to punch a drone and i was like oh my god this is so dumb i i it's did like the ending and that fucking cause... poster is such a lie it makes it look like this is going to be a follow-up yeah, there's yeah, no and he's not vampire. Even on there. They didn't even redo like a poster. That. They just used the old poster. It's <laughs> cheap. Did. Yeah, there's the vampire. That's real like, cheap. Barlow's, he's not in the fucking movie. No, no vampire looks like that. There's a little bit of effects in this movie. There's some pretty funny. Minimal. The coolest part is the fire shit at the end. Yeah. Well, the, like, the end is fun when Sam Fuller and him are running in people's houses doing like the Neville fucking from I Am Legend, just going in houses and killing them when they're sleeping. Yeah. That part I liked. I think actually, this movie actually, is hilarious just because it's so like stupid i I am entertained by it the best part in the movie actually is samuel fuller when they're in the basement with the with the cop and he pretends to get pulled in to the cop and then he shoots him in the face and he he puts his gun he shoots him right in the fucking face (laughs) that part is actually pretty good yeah i thought that was pretty funny but otherwise man like this is a mess got heartburn every time they had lunch on set (laughs) where are my antacids i feel like it's like where are my antacids uh you know i read he reminds me of a larry david character like he'd be in seinfeld for some reason oh where is it here i swear to god this was two different people's final films 
Who? So where does it say? I think it says that the kid, the son, that was his was only, his only movie. movie he ever did in but, his career. And that was the judges. The guy who plays the judge. It was his last movie, right? Yeah, uh, June Havoc and Andrew Duggan, both their final oh, films. It's just Michael Moriarty wore a full hairpiece in the film. That's right, because he was like oh, completely shit. bald. He was so bald. Yeah, right. He's been bald forever. Yeah, he's like fucking Jeffrey Lewis, man. He's he's always been bald to me. I swear he had hair. I, I think Salem's Jeffrey Lot. Lewis actually had hair then, though. In Salem's Lot, he had hair. Yeah, he. I don't think been. that was a wig. But I always think of Jeffrey Lewis as like bald. It's weird. Yeah, like, I mean, he's bald in Double Impacts. First time I ever saw him as a kid. And then he was in all those Clint Eastwood movies, and he's always been bald. I love this fun fact. It's I like when he asked his son if he got laid tonight. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, you in a good yeah. mood? You get laid? And, and Michael Moriarty <laughs> sounds like Christopher Walken in this movie, by the way. That is the <laughs> other unexplored he stupidity in the fucking narrative is the son who, which doesn't get bit, but is all of a sudden somehow turning into a vampire. So that's why they try to escape the first. He's like, oh, he's turning. And he's like, blah, blah, blah. And then he has that crazy. Actually, that's a pretty nasty scene when when uh, the drone attacks uh, Michael Moriarty and he fucking bludges him in the creek with the rock. That's pretty cool. Yeah. But it doesn't look like that, Maine, though, does it? No, no, it doesn't. Or New England. I think they actually shot this in Connecticut or something like that. So it's at least it's really? on the East really? Coast. Yeah. They oh, shot I didn't it somewhere. Know that. But, it um, I'm wrong. But yeah, like I. Like that seems pretty nasty when he bludgeons that drone and shit like that. But the whole angle of the sun turning into a vampire when he clearly did not get bit is the fucking most unexplained stupidity in the narrative too. It's like, wow, like th- this doesn't even make sense. They didn't even try to explain it either. But then it turns out like he doesn't even turn. So what the fuck? I, I do like when they're driving in the bus and all the vampires are trying to attack him. I mean, there is some fun stuff. It's It's a bad movie, but it's entertaining to me. I'm not going to lie. I enjoyed it. You know what? Yeah, this was, I, I didn't hate it, but it's just like it's I can't really stand stupid. Back it. I was it's actually really dreading because I watched these. I did it last summer. I watched these back to back last summer, and I was and I okay. So this was the thing with with Return to Salem's Lot. I always thought I'd seen this movie, and I popped it in. I was like, if I've seen this, I have no recollection of anything about this movie. So I, I just took it like got it. Yeah, I just assumed I'd never seen. I, it, so. I think I've seen parts of this on Monster Vision when I was a kid. I think Joe Bob showed it. But I, I didn't really remember much about it, if anything. This is like the real bad version of Children of Night. So I just was I noticing like everything bad about this movie this time around. Like it's just, you know, the weird vampire creature that was cre- creeping around in the fucking woods and stuff. Like, would That's never the really... judge. Yeah. But like he never really. It, it's so weird, though, because like he looks like Dookie Butter. It, it looks like. <laughs> looks like sloth from the goonies at one point right <laughs> the you best know? part is when they open that coffin and they have that puppet vampire in there and it's like ah! <laughs> yeah i guess second. i guess when they when he turns it's funny too because when he turns later on in the film he actually looks different than he did earlier in the film i swear I they changed the makeup it's like the weirdest thing too well uh, i think that those that one with the puppet in the woods was just a stand-in they're not going to put that actor in that oh probably so like, that's probably why it looks gonna, different we're, yeah we're just going to film you for 10 minutes shake it around <laughs> in the woods and we're going to insert them wherever we need scary moments so and i was then, so confused <laughs> by that i'm like is that the judge because i don't think it's the judge like, <laughs> <laughs> i didn't think it was the judge until the end then they reveal he's got a real nasty face you're like oh that was the judge the whole time yeah. but the one part is <clears throat> what's really funny is like when fucking Samuel Fuller steps in the trap in the fucking basement. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's like a 10 minute scene where the vampires are trying to attack him. And Michael Murray already runs down. It's so sloppily done. Oh, with the holy water on him. And then the whole movie, Sam Fuller has to limp and he falls down. Dude, watch him this limping like across the can- street. Is- watch him limping this across the street. It's so funny because he's not and then even. He falls. <laughs> He's not even doing it properly. He stepped on his foot a couple steps and he's like, oh yeah, I forgot I'm fucked up. And then I guess what? They weren't even going to hire a stuntman or anything. They're no. just like, all right, fucking 75 year old Sam Four, fucking run across there, dragging your feet. He's like, are you fucking kidding me? You know what? I think, I think literally this movie killed him. Did like, he die is, shortly after this? A month later. It opened up. No, he didn't. A movie opened no, up. Did. Don't fucking lie to me. The movie opened up September 11th, 1987. He died October 30th, date, 1987. And he died October 30th. So I'm assuming he saw it in the, in the cinema and he was like, eh, I'm done. 
<laughs> he's like, he was going to watch it for Halloween. He's like, I'll watch it a couple days before Halloween, get in the spooky season mood. And he's like, I can't believe I ruined my career like this. Yeah, it says he dies of uh, natural causes. So he just, yeah, packed it in. Yeah, he died from re- fucking Return of Salem's Lot. He did, man. The they movie literally killed him. It, up. it was that, it's <laughs> like because, it's all because they didn't hire a fucking stunt actor to make him live across the street. Hey, really stick your foot in this bear trap. We don't want to pay for special effects. <laughs> you saw what the judge looked like. Dude, I love this fun fact. It says consider the nadar in brackets the lowest point in director Larry Cohen's career. Yes. Who's get, I, by who? By who? I don't know. It just says that. That's all it says. But it's, who says that? Did it's Larry probably Cohen him. say that? It's probably him that says that, actually. Like he realized after he's like, Oh yeah, I just did the worst I feel fucking like movie ever. While he was making this movie, he had a stomach ulcer and he was just chugging fucking like Malex. Oh yeah, it even says here a rare instance in which a TV miniseries was followed by a theatrical release sequel well, there you go this movie should have this is a direct video movie if i've ever seen one. Oh yeah i'm i can't believe it got theatrical this, well, it, it, and, this and e, uh, they said it got pulled three it got pulled after a week though video and they ended up being both theatrical How, who would i'm not trying to be a dick i love it's alive three because it's so funny and goofy but who's like man i, I gotta get to see that it's alive i own the alive in theaters yeah <laughs> that's such a that's like being basket case three didn't go to theaters did it, it he shot up. those movies re- like back to back like almost at the same time it's alive and uh like there's just three. some movies that i just don't think play well in a theater like you're not gonna go see like basket case three or fucking it's alive three in a theater or like silent no. night deadly night four it's just like no these are fucking directed oh, these are watching for show. silent night deadly night three in the, in the theater oh that would be the worst experience. That's like I think that I think that like three of the Children of the Corn films went to theater. Yeah, I think the f- what first three? Did the I first think three? The first three? I think the first yeah. three went. Oh, yeah, shit. four socks. Yeah, uh, people like four. I can't. Remember. I'm basing this on my ten. I like four better than five. When I was ten. Yeah, but and, and then six is it was unwatchable. It, six is just oh my! It's like six is uh, legitimately just like it's in the Hall of Fame terrible i could watch the first three children of the court movies i'm not watching anything after that <laughs> i mean i actually like uh revelations Revel- revelations Genesis. actually if you took off the children of the corn name revelations actually isn't a bad movie and honestly the remake the is is pretty okay as well yeah the remake gets unfairly hated on man what about the wrath of the one. crows the original version yeah it's okay yeah, <laughs> yeah i haven't is. seen that in years it was okay. it's a special like feature on the blu-ray isn't it? isn't it yeah it's short can't remember. that blu-ray is so overloaded with special features i was watching all of them and i was like that's enough i've seen enough yeah it is crazy like, i got like i was watching like a 45 minute interview with fucking uh john uh what is his name the guy from return of the dad john philbin yeah john philbin i'm like you were in the movie for 10 seconds how come you got an hour to talk about this oh the guy that played amos yeah he's he's just like i mean i like the actor but i'm just like bro they should have edited <laughs> is it in the movie for 15 seconds <laughs> They got like an hour and a half with them. And they're like, bro, edit this. Yeah. Um, oh, I would actually like so to do the bad. It's Alive films. That'd be fun. Oh, That'd be fine. This movie's so fucking stupid. Like the scene where they're in the, where, when they go to the church and then they, they incorporate this idea that like the vampires sometime or somehow kind of hypnotize them and made them sleep in so they couldn't get their shit done. Like, <laughs> like oh my God. They wake right? up and they're like, oh, what we don't have we enough doing? time to do this. I'm like, what the fuck? That's so stupid. What the fuck? They're just like incorporating things into the narrative that don't even make sense. I'm like, oh my God, Cohen. It's like he was like, on a bender and he was just writing shit down. He's like, well, I guess I'll, I'll use that. I don't know what the fuck is going the, on. The, the whole plot line of like, Oh, we're like, we've, we're, we fucking eat, drink cow blood and stuff like that. It's just well, like, I like how they try to, but then they, they, they sucker yeah. him into basically they trick him into getting one of their own pregnant. So then he's, in, he's basically bound by blood now. Cause they've got a fucking girl that's having his baby. I'm like, really vampires are having babies now. Really? <laughs> Like, yeah, and is it like what? fucking a vampire? That's how maybe? they got him to stick around because, like, otherwise, like now you're bound by blood, and it's like this dude, whole fucking mythological. You're telling me, dude, like most fucking people just take off on their chicks they get pregnant. You're telling me you get a vampire baby and you're not gonna take <laughs> off? Yeah, like and, Michael Moore, you're already some upstanding citizen. He just filmed the stuff film five minutes later, right. five minutes ago. Yeah, <laughs> and like his wife had to pretty much fucking beg him to take his son. Like, fuck that other little vampire baby, bro. You know what the oddest thing about these two movies is? Both movies have scenes where their students doing plays. Like Cohen <laughs> had to throw that scene in there in the in the school with you know they're rehearsing that play, and of course there's one in the in the original film too. So I'd note that I the one that contrast. 
Um, <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> Fuck. COVID. Dude, I can't get rid of this cough. I've had it for a month. Jesus, man. It probably is fucking from COVID, son of a bitches. <sighs> oh, man. Th- this is like, the more, it, like, okay, like I said, you know, I watched it last summer and I watched it again. You know, I mean, My watching it twice. and dead for a second. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> walk, watching this movie twice in a calendar year, less than a calendar year, is like, <laughs> it's miserable, man, because this time around, like, I was appalled when i was watching it last summer i was like what the fuck like I you were just thinking having flashbacks when larry cohen was mean to you at that convention well no he wasn't mean he, was just, <laughs> he actually didn't but that's the thing he, he didn't even really say anything he was just grumpy you should have been like hey what's up with uh return of sam's lot bro what that's my mean? favorite movie of all time he's like <laughs> he's just well, like fuck off i did have that great conversation with kevin tenney the same con pinocchio's said, revenge and i said i said hey man where's uh where's all your copies of pinocchio's revenge for sale and he looks at me and he goes would you have any for sale and we both started laughing i actually <laughs> fuck with pinocchio's revenge i liked it when it came out but i don't remember it now i saw it when it came out like a th- is that 96 96 as yeah. well yeah that's a top 10 of 96 that's how <laughs> bad that year <laughs> oh shit coming in at a 5.5 pinocchio's revenge my number 10 in 1996 yeah this is one of the messiest narratives messiest movies stupid ideas mixed with like i mean honestly another fun fact about this movie is like the kids actually have more profanity in the film than the adults do mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a stupid thing it says that in the trivia and i was like okay it makes sense because the kid does say fuck a lot in this movie but yeah he's super hostile but uh yeah, he's like a little fucking jeremy he is man he's just like <laughs> hostile for no reason he's like if, yeah, if, if like jeremy was on the show he'd be like fuck i hated that little kid <laughs> yeah, yeah, much. But, dude but remember this the kid, but this kid in the movie gets laid that's not gonna happen the kid from it he li- remember i'll never yeah, forget dude it. he was talking so much shit he's like the i can't even stand look that like him that fucking Ricky like him or whatever and i'm he like fucking, dude you lit this is literally you bro that's you a mirror stand yourself that's a fucking mirror it's a mirror bro <laughs> yeah ridiculous this is i don't know man like I really don't like this movie. It, it's like it's good for some <laughs> laughs. I'll say. And you know what? The other thing is crazy. Like this is like over a hundred minutes, man. I've just no, it ain't. It's a hundred. It's, uh, it's hundred and one uh, no, minutes. Uh, yeah, it is. Actually. No way. Yeah. What yeah. the fuck? <laughs> there's like twenty minutes of this movie where they're just wandering and nothing happens. That's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> like this is so Your moods so complain it, about it. It, makes it honestly laugh. feels like a prank. It does. It's like we I got don't know punked. what's happening. We got. It punked feels in like this, he's man. like. So you didn't let me make the first Salem's Lot. I'll give you Salem's Lot. I'll give you a return to Salem's Lot. Here we go. I'm not writing anything for this movie. We're just gonna play it by ear. I, I just picture him think, on a typewriter in the '80s saying that with the fucking lightning storming outside. I'm convinced he's, this he's is the same damn script mouth. that he. This is the I same script that he had in 79. Lot. I give you a return to Salem's <laughs> Lot. Had to, yeah, yeah. He's like, hey, this time the vampires, you know, what are they going to do? They get, they're making clones. The vampires I, I, make clones. They do now. Haven't you ever read Dracula? It happens in that. I'm fully convinced that this is the same script. It has to be because <laughs> Stop. It, it's so <laughs> bad. It is legit bad, man. Like, why uh, did they make a return to Salem's Lot seven years? Like, why eight years? Hurt. Like, why was like the demand so high? They're like, you know what? God damn it! They've been asking for a Salem's Lot movie for eight years, and we didn't give it to them. Oh man! Well, the thing is, like, you would think, okay, maybe like it would be like three years after you would do like a, a TV, another TV movie to like capture the audience that watched yeah. that seven years ago or whatever. Or, or, you know what I mean? or, or was this like was the original constantly playing on television still for eight years, and people just were like all time sure ratings was. one day, and then it just like in 1986, it was like oh, it was the highest rating all month, so let's just re- make a new one now. Like dig that I, it, shitty script that fucking Larry Cohen wrote out. It, it's one of those weird, weird things that you could just never, you could never pinpoint the correct answer because that's that's why there's no fe- special features on the Blu-ray. I'm pissed off. I wanted the comment. I want to know what how this movie get made. I was yeah. literally just going to say that. I said it sucks that there's nothing about the movie except for like these little factoids on IMDb. Yeah. But there's nothing to like really sink yeah, your teeth there's into because no I would uh, info online about the box office. But it does make sense actually because like you know Larry Cohen, if he did say this is the low point in his career, why would you want to talk about it after? Like even if like Screen Factory part of the story, this- bro. Exactly, man. People need to know why this this donkey dick exists <laughs> dude but th- th- like those are some of my favorite special features is to movies that like 
are like this, like a sequel to something. It's like, how the fuck did this happen? Right. What was the thought process behind this? Like uh, that, that's where I want the special features. It's pretty crazy. Well, like when it's alive, three is three times better than this movie. Like, and that movie is goofy as hell. <laughs> I've never seen past part one. It's goofy, I, I dude. It's to. super goofy, man. But it's, it's actually, hilarious though. I really like all three. It's alive movies, man. They, they all, they're kind of different. There it's kind of like four. It's alive movies. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Remake, yeah. Oh, oh my God. That fourth one with that <laughs> fucking C- CG baby. Oh, it's bad. <laughs> I've never seen that one. Either. It's bad, bro. Oh man, dude. I don't know. I think it's super lazy to not have at least a commentary because it doesn't really, it, it, I or mean, just some dude, film historian. Anybody. Yeah, like get Troy Howarth on there, bro. <laughs> Troy Howarth don't want to talk about this movie. Yes, he, he does. He, he talks, talks about no, he talks no. about good Italian movies. Troy Howarth. Uh, most guys don't want to talk about movies they don't like. I thought he did TV movies too. Am I mistaken? Uh, who's the one? Well, Amanda I guess this Reyes isn't a TV, TV movie. movies. No, Amanda Reyes does a TV. Movie. I know she does a lot. No, of th- this movies, is the I only kind of commentary you're going to get for this movie is on riff tracks. <laughs> right, well, yeah get those guys i mean they a lot of the screen factory put out get a sam fuller shit. expert just we actually about did sam fuck fuller. up we actually did fuck up this would have been a great movie to do a commentary over because it's just so stupid like we could just be cracking jokes the whole it's so fucking stupid yeah like I, I, coming from a fan of bud the chud this is pretty fucking dumb and you know me, I don't even like to use the word stupid when describing movies. I think it's very juvenile. I think it's like an invalid thing. It's like, you know, you could probably come up with a better adjective. No, I'm going to stoop down to this level and call this movie stupid because that's what it is. It's a bad, stupid movie. <laughs> Fuck. And I had to watch this. At, well, I didn't have to, but I subjected myself to watching this twice in the last six months. Fuck. What am I doing? I had enough. You guys have anything else in this? No, I think uh, not. I think we're good, bro. I just, I, I think I just cannot. Eat. Oh, so, okay, yeah. A special feature on this would have been fantastic just to find out how in the fuck Samuel Fuller got involved in this. He did it because he's friends with Cohen, I bet. Probably, right? Directors and directors. Yeah. It, it They're out to dinner of- or something. He's like, I got a movie if you want to roll. You want to play a Nazi he, hunter? He, he, he did write him a really funny, like a Nazi. It's funny the fact that he's not even a fucking vampire hunter. He's hunting he's Nazis, Nazis who gets involved in hunting vampires. He's like, I'm not a vampire hunter. I'm a, va-, or he's like, I'm not a Nazi. Well, hunter. I mean, I get, I, it kind of makes like, sense, right? If you're going to, if you're going to like be hunting Nazi Nazis, killer. I mean, <laughs> like not too far difference. <laughs> I do like yeah. that line though, where he's like, I'm not, I'm not a Nazi hunter. I'm a Nazi killer. <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean you might as well kill him if you find him right. well that was his objective he's like he's not trying to do no citizens arrest and shit he's 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 bucking him down man he's got his fucking uh, luger and shit that he took off a german soldier i don't think many people are gonna feel bad if you're killing nazis just no, say nobody give a shit nah there was okay. there there is legitimate people that were hunting nazis in like the 60s and 70s and Dude, they were Tim killing Kennedy's them in South still shit. hunting nazis no, there was people that were killing them in like South America and shit. Like they were hunting these Tim motherfuckers. Tim Kennedy, the MMA fighter. Yeah, bro. Yeah, there's been yeah. stories of people. Yeah, like, dude. He he literally and just tracks down head. Nazis in like South America. Yeah, and and That's and cool. and and authorities would literally turn their eye to it because they're like they're fucking war criminals. They're Nazi war criminals, and they would just okay. That's it. It's crazy. It was like, it, that it was like legal. Fight, by the way. It was like legal vigilantism. It's crazy. They should make. Your Romero's a dirty ass fighter. They got to make some fucking movies about that shit, man. It's oh, crazy. yeah. The Stillgate. I don't like Gil Romero, to be honest. I don't like him. He gives me a bad vibe. He's a good fighter. I just think he's a piece of shit. That's how yeah, I feel. So, about him, something always turned me off about him, too. Bro. He always says something yeah, fucking yeah. weird and off. I just yeah, don't like Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a weirdo. Yeah. He's, he's a little clearly, bit. He's got he's some brain damage. He's got some brain damage. Even before there's that, also, There's though. also a language barrier, I think, to be honest. Yeah, there so definitely that is. probably doesn't help. With a little bit of brain Tim damage. Tim Kennedy seemed like an RA guy, honestly. Oh, Tim, Tim Kennedy <laughs> seems like a legit dude. Uh, that military dude <laughs> well i think that whole I'm weird thing these. when he was like no gay jesus or some shit like that you'll remember i was like what are you talking about bro just Dana white was cringing when he said it he was like oh who <laughs> you'll, you'll remember why did he, he say no gay yeah. jesus jesus what's the context I, of that it was weird i don't know he's just like i don't no know gay jesus like, how do you get into that conversation he doesn't like gay people i don't know <laughs> oh okay. that's how i took it but then he said later that's not what he was saying so i don't fucking know yeah, Who that's knows? a weird thing to say when you're talking about fighting and stuff. Like, that's a, it was that's a weird thing to say after you win a fight. Yeah, I'd be like, okay, 
<laughs> like all right Even the translator's like uh yeah just I'll, I'll just let <laughs> well, me translate speaking fucking thing. english broken but yeah it's crazy <laughs> <laughs> no fighter would say anything that way the only only dumb fighters say stupid shit like that remember that one dude that was like don't fear me and then get like <laughs> fear the the crowd don't say, fear me don't oh. fear the consequences that was the, the crowd, he's like come on don't fear the consequences like, i remember bro. now that's, that's, Paul that's what i was going to bring up gp you brought up um the fact that the the vampires were feeding oh. on animal blood do you remember why they were specifically feeding on the animal not also because it can regenerate itself fine and like you know they don't have to kill the animal and stuff like that it's because they were talking about you know the pandemic or the epidemic in the world at the time with the hepatitis and aids yeah. and stuff and they're like they were afraid to catch I hepatitis and aids that. and stuff like that and i was like that's so 1987 it's crazy do you, do you remember that dumb fucking movie is it called grave robbers that vinegar syndrome put out where they're like killing beautiful young people and dude, then fucking I, the bodies dude and that you remember movie's that dumb, awesome that was terrible movie. no it, it's, it's so much fun <laughs> the, the funniest lo- line in that movie where they're like and we can't catch aids and i just yeah. was like i put my head in my fucking hands and i literally just shook my head dude i actually myself. enjoyed that it's so bad it's good it's like it you know it's it's a fun bad movie this is just a bad bad movie <laughs> I think this is a fun bad movie. Oh, I don't. I really cannot. Oh, it's such. Can a we rate s- this turd? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I'm first. Um, yeah. I honestly think I enjoyed it more than when we were talking about it. You know what I mean? Like when <laughs> I, when I, I first finished it, I was like, ah, oh, it's fucking dumb, but like it's kind of entertaining. But like after talking about it, I I think I'm gonna drop my rating by a point. So I initially had it at a six, but I'll give it a five. What? You had this thing at a six? What the fuck? I, dude, I don't know. <laughs> no, I, I just, I, is... I'm just really shocked it was that high because, like, man, it's. Ugh. Yeah, I, I had it at a six. That's what I. That's what I logged whenever. I had it at a six it. too, honestly. See, and, <laughs> and I want to drop it, but I don't want to drop it because I just imagine Samuel Four walking around with a fucking sprained ankle. And I keep laughing. <laughs> yeah. I'm leaving at a six. Is that worth the point? <laughs> Yeah, it is. Sam Fuller's <laughs> with a point. I'll give it a five, but a point plus for Sam Fuller, so six. You know, we just started something. Man. We we just bl- we just blamed Larry Cohen for killing Samuel Fuller because they didn't hire a stunt <laughs> actor to get him across the street. We shouldn't stairs. be laughing this hard. That's so morbid. He couldn't wait, wait. He couldn't stand up after all that. He was on the stairs. He sat down. He's like. It's going to take me 20 minutes to stand up. Larry Cohen's like, quick, I'll just write a scene around you sitting on the stairs. That's how the whole movie made. Did he not forget? He was like 88 while he was filming this movie, for Christ's sake, man. Like, you can't have him run across the street. Oh, he actually didn't look his age. Like, I I actually was very shocked. He ran pretty quick, too. He was pretty fast. Yeah, like his face. He didn't look that old. It was crazy. Like, yeah, crazy. Um, Okay, so I originally have this. My last rating when I watched it last summer was 5 out of 10. I'm dropping it down to a 3. This is just, <laughs> and it's only because there is parts in this movie that make me laugh. It's so stupid. A three. My original rating is five. You can go on my letterbox, and then this one, I'm dropping it too because after watching the second time, I almost died. I almost fucking died watching this thing. This has gotta be Larry Cohen's worst movie, right? It is, man. It's so bad. This is so that to you, this is like Hall of Pain worthy. Yeah, it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> this is the biggest drop off you've ever had from us. You went nine to the fucking three. It dropped six points between <laughs> yeah. movies. That's gotta be the top. That's gonna be the top. <laughs> it, that means that means the original Salem's Lot is three times better. <laughs> <laughs> i recommend oh, everyone go and watch I, this. I gotta leave I, i'm gonna start coughing if i can laugh harder anymore <laughs> oh my god i haven't left this hard in the show and so it's so <laughs> oh. Oh. i swear to god he this did have a script i feel like this movie did have a script i feel like they're just writing as they went along oh I we just it's such a shame there's no features for this man because we could I I'm sure this would have been like an hour longer if we were talking about the features. It doesn't even have real actors in it. It has fucking Sam Fuller in it. He's it's the funniest thing, right? Like <laughs> you know, you're right though. They definitely went out for dinner. It was like a Mick Garris type thing. He's like, <laughs> He's like, Why don't you be in this movie I'm making? It's called it's a return to Salem's lot, Sam. You'll have a great time in it. Okay. All you gotta do I is jump, all you gotta do is hop good. across the street. 
And then Sam Fuller's like, can I play a Nazi killer? He's like, yeah, yeah, you could do whatever you want, Sam. I'll write it in there. <laughs> it's not even real. Uh, I swear, that's, that's my Larry Cohen impression, by the way. Oh, man. It's so funny, dude. Oh, shit. Trust all me, right. I'll do all the stunts, Sam. You don't have to do anything. <laughs> I'll do all the stunts. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, go back and just rewind that scene like three times. And it, him <laughs> him hobbling ac- across the street is just so funny. He and just he falls keeps forgetting. down one time, too. He just keeps forgetting that he's like got a bad leg. It's so funny. Yeah, it's pretty funny, man. All right, guys, that's going to conclude episode 237, Stephen King, volume one. Um, what are we doing next? Oh, yeah, it's the top uh, 10 of 1941. What a yes, switch up that is. is. <laughs> what a switch that is. Oh, man, I got to catch my breath. That was funny. That was good. That was good stuff. All right. Well, that was that was fun and actually a lot longer than I thought it was going to be, too. The lowest point in my entire career, a return <laughs> to Salem's lot. I didn't want to make the movie, but I needed the money. That's great. Oh, dude, I'm wiping tears, man. Oh, poor Larry <laughs> Cohen. Poor Larry I Cohen, killed man. Sam Fuller on the set. It wasn't my fault. There was supposed to be a stuntman, but Warner Brothers wouldn't give me the money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck, man. Oh, shit. All right. The cast was made of 75, 80 year olds. <laughs> everybody was a senior citizen everybody, everybody had an aarp card everybody was dropping after this movie it seemed like oh man everybody got a bad meal <laughs> well andrew guy. duggan andrew duggan only he died a couple months later like he died in may of 88 so he died a couple months after this movie was we went to too. the local diner for roast chicken and it was undercooked everybody got salmonella everybody got really sick I killed Sam Fuller. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we had it on marble rye, but the marble rye had gone bad. Dude, stop. Marble <laughs> rye? <laughs> man, every time I think of marble rye, I think of Seinfeld, man. The marble I know, because Larry Cohen, I swear, I swear Sam Fuller should have been a Seinfeld character. He should have been, man, yeah. He would have fit right in trying to kill Nazis. Oh, man. <laughs> Which is funny because they have that great Nazi episode where Jerry ends up playing the, or no, is it George ends up playing the, uh, the Nazi leader and they pick it, they get picked up in the, in the fucking, um, in the limo. That episode's awesome, man. Great stuff. All right. Okay. That's going to conclude episode 237. We're out of here, guys. Sorry, Sam (laughs) Fola. You're ridiculous.